We will convene the meeting. All right. Oh, let's see. Call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Brown. Present. Oh, Truman. Truman. He's not here. G. Lamont. Uh, Remark. Here. Costanakis. Here. Webster. Here. Dolan. Here. Levy. Here. Chapin. He's the alternate. He's the alternate for Truman G. So. Uh uh. Okay. Very good. Um, shall we stand, do the pledge, and Tracy, will you then lead us in? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Lord, we just thank you for bringing us safely here today, and all the visitors that we are in town, just <clears throat> bless them and keep them safe as well. Pray guide our discussions, keep us open to each other, and give us your wisdom so we might make sound decisions. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, do we have any comments with respect to the minutes? Yes. <laughs> okay, Ms. Remark. Well, actually, I gave the grammatical corrections earlier to Beth, but I think without Jason here, we might have to wait, because two of the comments are on what Jason was actually saying and what he meant. So maybe if we could, is he going to be here later? Yes. If we could come back to these? Okay, we can Great. pass some corrections. Oh, you, okay. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah. Uh, first on page three. The third to the bottom paragraph, Mr. Libby stated that he was on the Board of Adjustments and, and then the rest of this, I don't know where this came from, it certainly didn't come from the tape. The comment was that on the Board of Adjustments, owners who came before us looking for consideration always made sure their properties were in good shape. And this one was a mess with garbage and... So you missed the middle part. Yeah. So I don't know how you want to correct that. Maybe I'll see the secretary after the meeting because a lot of it is, uh, it's the first sentence. Um, yeah, I'm, I w I'm gonna suggest uh, Jeannie Tolley in our office uh, who had to step in at the last minute and create uh, these minutes. We'll, we'll go back to the tape and we'll uh, make okay. a note well, here. Well then actually, do you want me to just tell you the parts to check on the tape as well? Sure. Because actually, that's all she has to do. Okay, then. that's what we'll do. Let me finish. And then okay, we'll right. I, I'm sorry. Yep. Page 17, the second paragraph there, the last word should be structured, not structures, a typo. The only where where are you? Wait, wait, wait. This I'm is on page 17, the, the last? second paragraph. Mr. Oh, second. Mr. wanted the staff to look at other communities to see how their Got advisory it. boards were structured. Okay. Yet. The only other comment I have is on page two, the paragraph under board action, paragraph two, about the addendum and the 10 minute break. I understand that has gotten very confused and was revisited at, a, at the city commission meeting. Let the record reflect it was my understanding that four members of the board did not receive their documents. It, it is not that we forgot them and forgot to bring them to the meeting, which caused a 10 minute delay and, and, and Xeroxing of missing documents. It was that members of the board did not receive complete packets. Is that? That was my understanding. Mm -hmm. let, let, let and actually that's what the minutes say, if Mr. Chisholm had read them. We, we've done, obviously when the, when the, the uh, when that came to the commission and there was questions about what happened, uh, we were doing further follow-up uh, to find out after the meeting and then with the commission and in, in response to when we have uh, members of the public who come to the meetings and, and they make those statements. Um, thank you, John. We, we, uh, uh, we now have a new procedure where we actually 
uh, are required to provide some kind of a written response to to uh, those kinds of, of issues that come up and and at least give some kind of a <clears throat> response uh, the responsible staff member whoever so what we did in this case is went back and asked did did the mail go out by the people who were responsible for getting the mail out and this was the remember you got a packet early on mm -hmm. that was the primary packet and then you got another one which was a separate that was done with our planning staff mm -hmm. and they put together a packet um, that went out on a Friday uh, before the meeting and, and went into the US mail and we only had one of those come back to our office and so there's an assumption on our part they got to everybody that doesn't mean they got there on time or they were went to a place where you know it we we think we have all the right information Did everyone get their packet this mine mm -hmm. came the day after the meeting mine okay. never showed up very good so so we sent it on a Friday and it's gonna get there you know on a Thursday I don't know why but there have been some problems reported with just the sending out local mail mr. Berger yeah. I, I understand all of this and I agree yeah. with you 100 percent the yeah. perception at a city commission meeting right. was that members of this advisory board forgot to bring their documents with them and therefore we had to yeah. adjourn the meeting right. for 10 minutes and the staff had to take it upon themselves to reproduce documents that members of this okay. board forgot to bring and that I'm has sure. to be corrected on okay. that record right and and where was that said at a city, com at the at city commission mr. Forgot. the city manager okay. said it I didn't catch that, that we that. forgot yeah. no, I, no, I, no, I see what you're talking yeah. yes okay. okay and already then now I I know we're on the minutes but it's sort of pertinent to what we were just saying about timing could I interrupt were you done I am okay Thank you very much. Um, and rather than bring it under board comments there's a problem with relying on the mail because we no longer have a Daytona Beach post office so it used to be because I've gotten plenty of things in the mail you drop them in the mail on Thursday October 6 and in Daytona when we had a post office here a routing center you used to get them the next day I did not get this packet which thank goodness it was very light until Monday evening I had a meeting so I couldn't even read this until last night because it took from the 6th until the 10th to show up in my mailbox so if we're going to mail them we need to mail them like eight days before we're supposed to have because I ran into you know Friday Saturday it didn't make it Sunday mails not delivered Monday I get it so it yeah, either I got needs mine Saturday and I live on the same street, street. five houses away from Tracy so and if we're gonna mail it needs to be earlier to take into account it goes to Lake Mary first before it comes back here or we need to go back to delivery or email a lot of this stuff could be well, scanned yeah I know but I mean if, if, but, but if then you, you have to print it you want to print out the whole thing no okay. no 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 just to give you an idea, Dina, my, my, my internet at my store has been down since Sunday, since okay. the storm. All right. okay. Could I just ask maybe that, that you do send us some material as quickly as you can, as expeditiously and, and we know you as do. you can? Don't worry about our getting it too early. Well, and, and, I, and I think what you'll see most of the time is you will see me <laughs> or someone okay. else okay. who will be acting as the delivery agent uh, because that, that's what we usually end up doing. Uh, we want to guarantee that it's there by at least Saturday, Saturday yeah and handed by person to you in some fashion that you can get to it thank you okay if you don't hear anything too and I'd, I'd encourage you to uh, again call our office too if hey I'm I know every second Wednesday you know where is that darn thing you know well if I hadn't been me. coming back from vacation and hadn't noticed that this wasn't in the pile of mail yeah that I didn't get I would have normally called yeah. too. And we'll be glad to, you know, if we have to make an additional pack storm. of whatever. And uh, for some, if you want an email, we can we can do that as well. We've we've found that when we've offered email in the past with the packets, um, it was a very inconsistent in terms of yeah. who wanted it or used it. Okay. It's a lot of information. Okay. All right. Any now, other? two other places to check on the tape. Uh, uh, page two, action item under six, at the bottom. 
that entire first sentence something is wrong there mr jeffrey stated the request for a temporary parking lot at 41 no source had was approved by the city commission based on recommendations actually what we were doing that evening was making the recommendations that hadn't gone to planning board i think he may have been talking about the changes that we made in the land development code about temporary parking lots not this one in particular so that language needs to be corrected and then the bar uh, page 13 under item seven the one to the third paragraph under item seven starting with mr jeffries that whole thing doesn't even make sense i don't know what that is about it it's like three different sentences that maybe came together so if you could just figure out what that one was sure. yeah I <laughs> any other comments with respect to the minutes from the other board members I'll agree. I, I just got my package uh, actually this afternoon since I was out on vacation till late last night. And I found these set of minutes confusing, not complete. Um, it, on page seven, near the middle upper third, it says Mr. Webster stated the board had already amended that section to delete the roundabout, yet I don't see any reference to the motion or the discussion on that motion. Uh, and yeah, there was a good deal of discussion was, yeah. with respect to the roundabout and I think that's important and I think that all needs to be fleshed out um, and on top of what Tracy mentioned there so uh, what I'd like to suggest is that uh, we, we send the minutes back for, recon for reconsideration at our next meeting so moved second all in favor Aye. Aye. we will okay. bring them back thank you moving on to staff reports do we have any staff reports, Reed? And it, 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 I don't know what's happening, but we do not have people here. I can only think Biketoberfest <laughs> is having an impact on our personnel. Okay, I, I suspected that that might happen. Um, I, I would okay. really like to request that our next meeting, even though it's not necessarily on the quarterly flow, mm -hmm. that we have the uh, uh, police report and uh, be prepared to bring us up to speed. Yeah. We'll do. All right, uh, and we did have some. Uh, we did have the Comstat report, and we did have a uh, code. code case summary. So, all right, we will move on then. Uh, do we have any public comments, John? <laughs> Since you're our only public. Yeah. Actually, I thought you were going to cancel the meeting. We're not feeling loved here. I don't uh, know. Uh, what if I could add to the. Uh, correction to the minutes on page 11 top of the page he stated the plan indicates there will be many bars in the area and for years bars were wanted and the area was it should have been not wanted for years we do not we had always said we did not want a street full of bars you know I thought that's what you said but yeah you here to so I would ask that you put in the word not in front of word wanted not wanted the very last word very very top very first sentence yeah, that is what you said. it is yeah so that's what I thought I had said. It's like I didn't remember. Yeah. Okay. Uh, secondly, um, several years ago, uh, we had a person named David who was the personal rep. Some of you probably remember David. Um, the Midtown Board has one particular person whose sole job is to work on Midtown. Downtown has one person, Jeffries, whose sole job is to work on downtown. You had somebody, and you haven't had him for, for th what, three years, four years, that David's been gone. I think since you are the largest in terms of money, activities, value of land, that uh, you all should consider having someone geared just for Main Street, just for the, the problems that exist on the boardwalk, uh, communicating with the business owners, um, anything that needs to be done to uh, push for advertisement push for people coming down to Main Street, that kind of thing. I think you need to have that person. I know uh, Reed is filling in, but Reed can only fill in for so much. I think you need a, a, a singular person uh, to do this. Downtown has, what, five people helping them push downtown, and you have zero or half a person. Um, I think you really should consider the idea of having that person replaced. Um, and lastly, I was the pain in the butt that brought before the city commission 
uh, the concept that many of the boards, and then I singled you all out, were getting information at the last minute. And decisions had to be made that night. And um, my comment was that the Main Street Board was told that they had to make a decision that night and that it couldn't be put off because it was going to go to the planning board. Then the planning board had to make a decision because it was going to the city commission. Many times the city commissioners get documents at the night of the city commission, documents are placed in front of them. My comment was that there should be time, i.e. four days or, or whatever, and the documents should be allowed to be discussed and if need be, an additional week to discuss, or an additional month to discuss it, another meeting. And during that time, the city manager leaned over to the mayor and said something, and the mayor immediately said that I was wrong, that you all did not have a 10 minute delay, and that those people who did not have the documentation left them at home. I was taken aback, didn't know what to say, so I just kind of put my tail between my legs and walked away. So I was the one who thought and said that you all had four packets that did not have the documentation, that you had taken a 10 minute recess, the documents were reproduced, brought back to you, and there wasn't enough time for that many pages to read them, comprehend them, and to discuss them. That was my genesis. And in essence, uh, one of the people in the audience said that the mayor called me a liar. I did not think he called me a liar, but he did implicate that what I was saying was not factual. I believe you did have a 10 minute delay. I didn't implicate that, uh, I do believe that you had uh, your packets with you because you said you had them. So I do not believe I was mistaken on either one of those. And I do believe that 28 pages is an awful lot to read and comment on in, in one, one, excuse me, in one night. All right, Thanks, thank you. Uh, may we revert back to code? <laughs> Officer Fitzgerald, you're on. Hi, how are you all today? Good. This is the October report. Um, we had a total of 47 cases open this last month and uh, 37 in Main Street. The most of them were uh, maintenance code issues, four lot clearances, and 10 in South Atlantic. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of before me, uh, before by, uh, before uh, the Daytona Proud project started, and properties going through that. This was uh, 219 uh, North South Atlantic, and uh, they had all this was, you know, it really needed paint the whole building very badly. Uh, they went through everything back here, the stairs they repaired, they repaired all around the building. And uh, this is what it looks like now. It's all been painted across the whole way. I don't know if you all see a difference when you go by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 245 North Halifax. Some of you will remember this one. Um, we had to cut off the water, evict people. It was a big thing. Um, <clears throat> this is what the building looked like. You know, very dirty, very bad. Um, this is, it's in process of being done. They're uh, bringing it all up to date, new, new uh, windows, new doors, you know, painting in new colors. Was it sold? <clears throat> yeah, it was sold. And uh, they're really going to do some awnings here. They're going to have some awnings back here. They've repaired this, uh, this wall, which was the first problem I had with the mm -hmm. property. And uh, I mean, they're, they're putting a lot of money into mm -hmm. it. And granite countertops, stainless steel, they're going for high end. Interesting color, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a designer they hired. Oh, well, she did it for free, actually. She's a... Uh, yeah. She's a... <laughs> yeah. Which the, yeah. Yeah, you don't like it? <laughs> I didn't like it either, actually. <laughs> 109 South Wild. I mean, it was dark for me. I liked it a little yeah, bit lighter. Yeah, just wrong color for them, <clears throat> but whatever. It's a lot vast improvement. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is her house, actually, the designer. Mm -hmm. And this is after. Yeah, she likes those. <laughs> yeah, she likes the colors. strong colors, yeah. And she does it for free. Anybody who in that area wanted her advice, she helped. Yeah. Um, 33 South Wild Olive. Uh, all the grass area. 
we did wow. everything like you know Reed had asked for you know all the plants and grass and stuff mm -hmm. and <clears throat> 129 south wild olive before again the whole area grass bad um you know they planted they they they're really taking pride in their homes now so the whole area is really coming coming around 129 south grandview remember that one <laughs> Uh, she designed the colors on this one too. Uh oh, are you warning us? No, I like it. I mean, this oh, one I that's liked. Nice. That's yeah. festive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Three fifteen South Atlantic. Um, <clears throat> if you uh, see all the grass and stuff, okay. all the uh, up here they had all kinds of advertisement for beer and all that kind of yeah. stuff. The building mm -hmm. needed to be repainted. Palm trees need to be taken care of. Um, they removed all of the signs from the upstairs. They painted the entire building. They put in new plants and uh, big improvement. I mean, it was a nice building to begin with, but it really, it was time for to redone again. And uh, that's what. Very been, good. You're staying busy. I mean, that's just a sample. There's a lot more out there. Mm -hmm. I, I, huh? And uh, <clears throat> like the other day, I was talking to somebody on Harvey, uh, just around the corner on Harvey, and uh, he's looked at all these houses and now he decided instead of painting he's going to redo the entire house so good. sounds good thank you thanks that's where i was just at uh the back building and uh we're hoping to get mark criswell out there and uh condemn the back building and see what we can do um is that the one they thought might be arson yeah it is yeah where that's everyone what, was they're saying okay and uh, <clears throat> it's open. Can we board that up or? Send me an email tomorrow on that and we'll, we'll work on that. All right. Thanks. What property? Three. Uh, Seven twenty. Let's see. North I have the pictures if you want to see it. <clears throat> it's going to be. Uh, Three, two thirteen North Oleander. Mm -hmm. Two thirteen North Oleander, and uh, the front building is okay. The uh, the back building is what burned. Anybody want to see a picture? Yeah. Okay. I well, it said seven twenty or something like that. Hollywood. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, no, it's I <coughs> Yeah, I thought I read it as Grandview, not Hollywood. All I know is I came out of, I came out of work and I could smell smoke. Yeah. <laughs> not good. No. Thank you. Okay. Um, on to land development code rewrite. Thank you. Thank you. Reed, do you guys have any further presentation? Well, we have what could be a fairly lengthy presentation <clears throat> for you, um, but I think the, the, the request last time was, uh, first of all, to offer uh, to you the Ar Article 12 and look at the, the, and the powers of the board and was the, the I think the, one of the questions is to start getting into that uh, this evening. Um, so I, and that's, that's the first item mm -hmm. uh, on the list is to, is to go right to um, the uh, the membership issue and and article 2.3 uh, in the code and see if uh, uh, there's some suggested changes you want to okay. make sounds good all right uh, board yes we addressed this last time briefly with respect to the redevelopment uh, or the, the code rewrite uh, in section 2.3 of the redevelopment board and ask you to take a look at it, be prepared to come back and give your proposed uh, comments and requested revisions. Uh, shall we just start and go around? Or does anybody have a strong preference to speak up first? Could, Gary? Can I get a definition on the term review? What constitutes review? Are you looking for a review and recommendation? Or share with me your definition of review here on 2.3. What are you looking at, Gary? Review major site plans. Review major temporary use permits. What does what does sure. review 
mean? Ap approval would be needed by this board yeah. for them to okay. move forward. Well, well, is that what we mean by review? No, they, what, what that, that's just a you know shorthand for the PowerPoint, but what that review means is review and in the case of a site plan, you have final decision, final authority well, to decide site plans. Th that power to me is much more important than the power to review. So, um, I, you know, I, what other, what other, I guess we'll have to go through every one of them then and, and have you share with well, us, with us. Yeah. Might I suggest that we not worry about commenting on the PowerPoint, but actually let's look at the uh, Land Development Code, Section 2.3 in its draft and see what sections one might like to have revisions made to because going by his PowerPoint is, is I think going to be counterproductive and that it's not complete and you have to look at the actual document itself to see where we need to make revisions and I've got a few thoughts myself. Um, is anybody prepared to look at 2.3 and make suggested revisions? I have questions and Tracy. comments, yeah. Okay. Um, and the, the first part, actually if we want to look at um, not looking at the PowerPoint, but looking where it starts, redevelopment boards, establishment, powers and duties, under B2, decide applications for development permit. It does say to review and decide. Yeah. Okay, so redevelopment conditional use permit, which we currently do. The next one, it says to review and decide the following applications for development permit when they involve land within blah 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 it has under that a major site plan, which we do, but there's still a problem, um, and this is right now between staff and Clarion. This board does not review major temporary use permits. Tempor major temporary use permits are like bike week permits. That's city commission stuff. And I, I, I mean, as the planning board member here, I know I've been talking to the planning board staff on that, that there seems to be uh, a disconnect between what Clarion understands. So that's actually not something that we do unless they mean something else. Um, well, would you like though, to well no, that? I'm asking because actually under last month there were some comments from board members about wanting to see mm -hmm. the Bike Tempor Week and Biketoberfest. Right. So that's what I need to, I mean, as the planning board member here, that's what I need to know. It used to be that way, um, and then the chamber ended up um, taking over it, and I guess the Chamber of Commerce makes the presentation with their recommendations directly to the city commission and pockets half the money of, uh, I guess, from the applications and what have you. Um, I believe that's the way it works. I mean, how, how does a, uh, how does a, uh, how much money does the chamber make from making the recommendations to the city commission? And why, do you know? No. It's a secret. It's a big. But it, 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 they make money off of it. I I really uh, don't get involved in the, the whole special event okay, issue. But, but before the chamber did the, um, it used to go before the Main Street redevelopment board and the recommendations of the planning board and the city commission. Gary? Yeah, yeah I, I think the point was that we would like to get involved in that if the city commission feels that it's a proper uh, role for us to play. I think there are a million reasons why we uh, could help uh, solve some of the things that have fallen between the lip and the cup in that in this process. And I think that was, Mr. Chairman, I think you led the charge on this and many of us concurred with you. And maybe that's why, Reed, it says new in parentheses in the PowerPoint, that would be a new duty. Anyway, I, I'd like to suggest that we, in the, in the in a formal motion, if it's appropriate, when it's appropriate, that we bring this um, request to the City Commission I mean, does this document have to go to the City Commission for any changes in the document? Um, it, it, only when we get to the, the, the final, um, uh, we're in Module 2, we have Module 3, and then they'll put it all together. And when we have that final document, the planning 
the, and actually it won't even go to the planning board then until they start they have to actually use the final document look at old things that have been improved and and test the document well, to see if it was, works right. that was our request our request was i thought that there had been a lot of coffee talk that had changed policy but not officially and that the actual document still read one way <laughs> But yet, there had been some motion made by someone at some time that altered it and changed it and moved the review of temporary permits away from this board directly to the city commission, of which, of course, it's their right to, to do if they want. But was that reflected in that, an amendment? That was done when I was on the commission. Right. That's that was that was taken away from the redevelopment boards because there were there had not been any special event ordinance anything. Right. It just happened. And so when I was on the commission, we went through actually a couple of years of working with all the boards, the chamber, everybody else, and made the changes <coughs> in the land development code. You know, the planning board saw it, the redevelopment boards, and that's what made the changes well, and set it up now? where we are now is we have this rewrite this document rewrite mm -hmm. and in this particular section somehow this has ended up back in a redevelopment board duty but it ended up back there somehow because clarion understands a major temporary use permit different then we currently mean it in our land development code. So this is the time if you want to make changes or suggest changes, this is the time to suggest those changes. Well, no, I but understand it, that. I, I guess but so it's still officially it's done currently to the land development code. Okay. All this right. board, no redevelopment board and oversees I, Mr. anything. Mr. Chairman, you want to take these one at a time? I'd like to recommend that this responsibility be put back um, be be, uh, be moved back to the uh, Main Street South Atlantic redevelopment. Actually, board. it would be all redevelopment boards because Midtown has it, okay. downtown has all redevelopment boards for a variety of obvious reasons. I don't think we need to go through the challenges and the problems, and it has nothing to do with the partnership between any other agencies like the chamber and the city. I, where nobody is is up to affecting that. I just think. We would benefit as a city. Everyone would benefit if we were involved in the review. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we go on to all this, can we move back to the staff report for a since the police chief is um, out here? Yes, that's. I was uh, just notified, and I don't have my glasses on, so I was like, "Who is that?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the police chief would wait until we finish this item. <laughs> oh my gosh, she'll be here forever. Here, Gary, to support my young captain here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, why don't we take a break in our discussion of the very exciting uh, land development code uh, <laughs> rewrite oh, and, uh, and invite uh, the captain and the chief, whoever would like to address us. Thank you. Captain. Uh, I'm here to, to give my uh, quick little Comstat report. Uh, throughout the summer, we were kind of holding on to a 5% lead over in part one crimes, uh, meaning that uh, compared to last year, we were down 5% overall in part one crimes. Um, we had a tough summer. We had a tough summer citywide. Um, we knew we were going to have a tough summer. You know, school is out, kids are out, um, a lot of people in town, a lot of tourists in town. Um, so we did a lot. We did a lot with the Hotel Motel Association, um, courtesy cards, a, a lot of things to try to, to try to get that down. But unfortunately, we we were stuck at five percent, which is still a good thing. We we're down five percent overall. Uh, we just came out of this last Comstat period, I think, two weeks ago, and uh, we've gained. We, we've gained some percentage points. We're down 7% overall in the district in Part 1 crimes. Our goal is 10% by the end of the year. I'm pretty confident that we're going to make it. Uh, so, you know, we got a couple months left. I, I think that we're going to do it. So um, that's where we're at as, as far as crime. Uh, now, I know that, that one of the issues that, that always comes up here is, is noise. Um, for a period of about three weeks, um, within the last, I want to say the last six weeks, we went out with sound meters every single night of the week, and we measured sound. Um, there were some violations here and there. Um, 
Main Street Station was one of them. Um, and we had some issues on Seabreeze, of course. Uh, but I've since met with uh, all of the Main Street merchants, including some there on Seabreeze. Um, they have all pledged compliance with us. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I explained to them, you know, what we were trying to do, and um, everybody seemed very receptive. Uh, nobody wants to be that business that's singled out. Nobody wants to be fined. Nobody wants to be not included in the in the master plan for special events. They all understand what's at stake. Um, so, they, like I said, they've all pledged their compliance with us. Um, I've I've told them that that we will be out. Obviously, this weekend uh, we have two people dedicated to nothing but sound enforcement this weekend. And um, I told them that, you know, we, you, you may get a knock on the door saying you're too loud and, and uh, you know, if you're told to turn it down, just turn it down. Bite your tongue and, and deal with it. If we have to issue notice of violations, uh, we will do that. We'll have code enforcement with us. So that's where we're at. I, th I think things have been pretty good since we've, we've gone through our education program with them. So we'll see how it goes this weekend. I'll just say that that education goes a long way. Mm -hmm. It really does. Mm -hmm. Once they got educated about seven, eight years ago, things were mm -hmm. really smooth for quite a while. It just kept going up, and so we really appreciate those efforts. Yes. Um, one quick thought, though, with respect to the, the weekend is it's not so much the bands. We kind of expect that. Mm -hmm. um, one problem is the person with a little PA horn or their own little amplified sound system for hawking their wares and such like that that's not authorized. Correct. Uh, and if you crack down on those right away and tell them they got to put it away and such, keeps every. Otherwise, they kind of feed off themselves at times. Absolutely. And so we'd appreciate that. They've, they've been, that's that specific event has been included in our legal bulletins. You know, every every year before special events, uh, we we send out all of the the laws that pertain to special events, and everybody gets refreshed before they come out. Just a reminder, these are the things we need to be looking for. So they they've all gone out to all the officers. They're all well aware of of. Of, of what they have to do so and then I'd heard something in the last week or so about some little rash of car break-ins or something on the beach side do you know anything about that no okay Actually, it was the rest it was, it was arrest. we arrested a guy who went for 75 broken 75 cars okay right. right that's a good yeah good to hear and uh, about a month or so ago you guys arrested someone in our backyard that was actually yes. in the boat next door and actually we we, uh, we made two arrests uh, one was for uh, a car break on your neighbor's house. Right. And then one was for trying to steal the boat okay. on the other neighbor's house. Good. On either side of you. Good. So. And he was sleeping yeah, in yeah, Miami. Yeah, nice. <laughs> right. And 300 North um, Atlantic, yeah, obviously I see a, a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> Is that Ocean Walk 300? Ocean Walk Wyndham. Yeah. I thought so. We have um, <clears throat> obviously uh, a okay. huge spike in crime there. Uh, we have been in constant contact either by email, phone, and we've actually had several meetings with uh, corporate people. Uh, there are definitely a lot of issues on those properties, um, but everything seems to be working. There, there were some structural issues with doors. They've all been fixed. Um, actually, I take that back. By tomorrow afternoon, every single door will be fixed on both towers, so that will eliminate the, the the issues that we were having there. Um, we offer our suggestions to both towers as far as improving security. Uh, they have agreed to do everything. Um, in fact, the Hilton has even taken notice of what we're doing there. We've met with them, and they're beefing up some things on their end as well. So uh, it, there was a lot of, a lot of obstacles at, at both properties. The, what, the problem that you have at both of these properties is you have three different management companies and two different security companies, all of them doing their own thing. Nobody was on the same sheet of music. We finally brought them all together. We've explained to them, you have a problem. This is our solution. We're willing to work with you. And everybody's together now, and uh, they are fixing everything there as quickly as they possibly can. So uh, since we first met with them about a month ago, we've only had two incidents, um, which is a far cry from what we were dealing with over the summer. We were averaging, you know, sometimes two a day uh, there throughout mm -hmm. the summer. So it was busy, but uh, things are definitely improving there at those properties. Very good. Any okay. Yeah, a couple. Of, I didn't um, realize we were going to talk about noise tonight, and I didn't bring your little packet that you gave us. But just one of the other things in terms of uh, education, you had in, or Mr. Webster had in the back and forth emails 
uh, that uh, I guess there were some officers that because Main Street Station supposedly had some permit from the city figure or the city commission had approved it, figured that they don't do anything. They, they all do understand. That's okay, great. It's been Thank fixed. you. It's been addressed. Okay. Okay. Okay, because <laughs> permits do have rules as well. Yeah. But then I had um, just a couple of questions on the Comstat that we had here um, between 2009 and 2010, January or whatever, the comparing it to the same periods. Um, sexual battery is up 70 percent. But if you yes. should be like two incidents. No, from 10 incidents to 17 incidents. Well, that, that's early on. If you look at us now, I think it's a difference of two Okay, that's overall. what I was going to ask, yes. the difference between those. So and then, okay, and then um, I did just have uh, something that I noticed that, I mean, well done. Firearm incidences in 2009, 72, and we're down to five. Yes. Uh, that's, that's amazing. That's, I don't know what you're doing, but... That's great that our streets are that much safer. Thank you. Um, Bravo. Yeah. There's two categories there that we have increases on, and uh, it's not unique to our district. It's it's uh, it's a citywide well, problem. Well, burglaries as always. It's, uh, yeah. Well, burglaries actually we're, we're down um, in property crimes. The yeah. two increases that we have are sexual batteries, which is which is an increase of two events if you look at the most mm -hmm. recent comp yeah, stat. That I saw. And assaults and batteries, but that's a citywide thing. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Um, I, I say on the last comp stat, like I can you tell you, we, we run, we follow the national trend. Seventy-five percent of our sexual batteries are known doers, they are acquaintances. Okay. The other twenty-five percent are the unknown. Mm -hmm. And the last unknown rape, actually, we have two unknown rapes in the city in the last two years. One was uh, uh, the woman who was a D, D, uh, DSC student who woke up on Winchester Avenue, saw a shadowy figure in her kitchen. Smacked her first face with a metal pipe, knocked her unconscious, oh. sexually assaulted her. Fortunately for us, he left so much DNA all over the place that we were able to make an arrest within two Good. weeks. The second one just occurred, and I don't understand how white people do this. They go to the Coliseum. She's there with her friends and family. She starts talking to these strange guys. They tell her, come on, we're going to go to another place. And she gets in a truck with them. In the car, And ends yeah. up sexually assaulted and thrown out of the yeah. car out on 92. So... That's one that we just got some information this week of a tag number of the car she was in, so we're following that. Okay. But a vast, vast majority of our sexual assaults are, I know, I met this guy, here's a picture of him, I got his cell phone, thank God for that. Yeah, so. okay, great. Thank you, those are my mm -hmm. only two. Anyone else? On that. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Oh, uh, yes, okay. We really- go. We have a new code guy. Okay, great. And uh, he's all fired up to meet you, and I'll do it. We appreciate the effort. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bring some class to this board and dress it nice and nice. Fellas, you guys gotta dress up. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, back to our excitement of the uh, redevelopment board. All right. Um, the question is, you know, uh, how how would you like us? I to would move forward. I would like to kind of take the approach we did last week. Let's have discussion about a topic. Okay. Uh, I think we have the issue of uh, does major temporary use permit approval include Bike Week, Biketoberfest, uh, and I believe any event in which we're having a closure of our streets uh, for an activity. I, yes, I would um, agree with you. And so I, I think we, that, that's my thought on that anyways. Um, and so that's one issue. Anybody have any other thoughts with respect to whether or not this board should be involved in the review? An approval process of such a permit application. Well, just event. Uh, since we're talking about this one, it, oh, I'm sorry. But, um, <coughs> I'm fighting a cold. Sorry. Um, is your I can't hear speaker you. Speaker, uh, hold up your, your special. We got a on. statement on how to use the microphone. Now. <laughs> the art of broadcasting. <laughs> uh, as an uh, as an appointed board, um, unless the commission directs us to to weigh in on these issues I'm not sure that I would support us requesting that um, I, I know at the last City Commission 
<coughs> meeting there was extensive discussion of the bike week arrangement with the chamber and 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 the the governing documents they had related to it <coughs> but the cha the chamber has been the agent for bike week and the CVB I believe is the agent for bike Toberfest. so unless the Commission <coughs> is directing us to take over I I'm reluctant to um, reach for that power unless they want us to okay thank you I, I think I think the suggestion was that we wouldn't affect the relationship between the chamber and the city at all that's not and nobody wants to take over the event I think the the outside agencies are continue to be very important with us the question is whether or not the actual request the permit should come to this board for review first and yeah and I think it's not final review I think it's a you know a step a in the process because I think we can have some direct input if we have a chance to review the proposed master plan uh, before it goes to the City Commission is my thought process yeah, right. my only um, thought process if we're going to go through the step which is essentially the same step that the Chamber is doing why not bypass the Chamber and let the city make the money and not share the revenues that I know that's going to be a controversial issue but it's a controversial issue the city needs to decide whether or not we want to because uh, uh, right now the chamber is sharing in on the uh, I guess the applications and everything yeah I mean I think that I don't think that's something we can necessarily get involved in here all we can do is get an application and review it give our comments on it uh, and let them move on to the next step. However, the city desires to get their application process initiated. I think there's a, subject to a few exceptions, a consensus of an idea that we want to have our, some say with respect to what that plan is or what that event is based upon what the application is. And actually, I would say about the application process, we don't have the staff to deal with no. the application process the city, I mean it's well, it's asking. right no that's what no, Dino was no. just saying yeah that's that there's not enough money for the city to hire on at the cost of employees okay. to go through taking all of that information following it up figuring out who goes where on the master plan that that is a huge part of what the chamber does that is everything that the chamber does and having been involved in those task force meetings which you have been I believe as well it leave that that's well. yeah leave don't touch that that's not what we're talking <laughs> about. right all right so okay. then, then they bring the mask okay I'm sorry well no that's what Dino just said bypass the chance it's like no do not bypass okay. that's that's, that's a huge amount of work sorry Timmy uh, Tim uh, I just I believe the same thing this like when sometimes we have new developments that come our way and we're a sounding board we give our suggestions to go out there and by no means is it, do we need to pull somebody out of the loop, be it the chamber or anybody else, because there was discussion that it's not, there, there's really no written agreement that it has to be the chamber every year. There needs to be, a say, a, pr a promoter <coughs> or a marketer or somebody to go through to make sure that that event takes place and it's feasible and, you know, there's, there's so many moving parts of it. So I don't think, at least that's not my idea that it should come here and we'd be the final say on it, but... Mm -hmm any a, a, any right, major yeah. thing that happens in this area and such where the streets are closed and you know we're going to use you, you know use our resources be it the police force or whatever for these for these type of events be it that uh the new year stuff things like that i think it should come before us at least for a sounding board so we can so we don't have the same issues like we had with the the whole e-zone thing where it just bypassed us where we are the, the appointed board for the main street area exactly. not just main street so that's just my opinion yeah because I'm looking back at section this because it says major temporary use permit section 3.403 and you look back on page 3-66 and that section is festival slash special mm -hmm. event permit procedure yeah okay um, and so you know it's got a pre-application conference a neighborhood meeting an application submittal and acceptance staff review and action uh, decision making body review and decision decision by the City Commission um, so I'm kind of confused how they've got a flow chart showing that process when they're saying that this board was supposed to be involved in the uh, that was my no point. they're saying this board what this was 
a mistake Clarion made, but now the mistake is out there. It was a mistake they made in understanding our process, so it ended up in here. Oh, so so this, that's why okay. this the, the, we even have this well, the to Lord look at. In mysterious yes, ways. he does. That's what I'm saying. It so, didn't so, so first question, Reed, is what we have before us under 2.3 in the book, is this exactly as it's written now, or is this as Clarion put it together as its draft? Yes, this is the draft. Okay. All this right, so draft. it's not all right. Thank you. It's so draft. we need to be looking and commenting on this draft yes. and, and saying what we like or don't like with respect yes. to it. So in essence, we're saying keep it in now. Is what keep I'm it hearing. in yeah. and Except make sure that includes Teresa. specifically Bike Week, Biketoberfest, any kind of special event where they're going to be doing street closures within the redevelopment area. We support area. Clarions. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we don't all support Clarion, so, and That's I am making notes of that. That's understood. All right. Well, do you want to take a vote? I mean, all right, now, do you want to take a vote on that? We, why don't we do that so we don't have a question with right. respect to the minutes next time? Right. Exactly. So do we have any motion with respect to section 2 point, <coughs> all right, 2.3 B 2 B 2 little two. I? I'll move that we support the Clarion uh, recommended. Uh, recommendation in the rewrite, and that includes the concept that including it and brings it forward. That Bike Re Week, Biketoberfest, any other special events in which we have street closures and things of that are nature are included. All right. Any discussion on that? Um, <clears throat> oh, do we have a second? I second. Yeah. And then discussion. Okay. Presently, like I said, those two agencies are the agents. If if we have other events um, uh, I guess would we need another agent to that would be the city's application yep. process and how right. they go how they get the process started okay. and you know they, they, have, they have applications for things on Main Street that where they close the street off and such and I don't think it goes through the chamber and such does it no, no. Yeah. we so go through the so that yeah. I'm sorry but I mean so like like the was it the shrimp seafood festival, festival or the seafood festival right. There, there's the the promoter or marketer, whoever it is that that the Main Street group hires to promote that event. That would be the agent for that event. But it's still, then it would be my assumption that it would come through us, and we yeah. could give our opinion or whatever. And we're not the, the the final say all on it. But then our recommendation could go forward to the next okay. body that would, you know, it would be if the city commission approved that. Okay, it's just that that <clears throat> like. Right now, the Biketoberfest, uh, the application deadline is uh, over five months prior to the event. Mm -hmm. So this will prolong the entire process. But it might actually streamline it if, right. we, can, if we can go through and, and put out some of the fires before it gets to the city commission. So right. then we don't have the, the stuff. I mean, because, uh, you know, I've been at city commission. Yeah, I see what goes on with why is, why, why is certain applications put in, written, that, that aren't drafted the withdrawn the way they're supposed to be or the application are filled out properly maybe we could weed out some of the stuff and maybe make their meeting a little bit easier i think teresa the suggestion is to make it easier and better and work better not <laughs> slow it down and make it not work because right now it's not a very nifty process from the outside now you're on the inside and you're a player in it and it might seem to be to work pretty well but the perceptions we I think we have to be sensitive to the perceptions the Commission is on how it handles these select special events and I think this would would help I think Clarion hit it right on however they got there I think they, they hit the ball out of the park on, on just I review the E zone raises that question dramatically I support Timmy's uh, comments. I mean, um, I, I just I think we'd be better off. It would be smoother, simpler, and we get where we need to go quicker with this layer of review. And <coughs> so, would it go from <coughs> this board to the city commission? I, I would presume so. I don't think they'd have us be the final decision maker. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, you know just like yeah. anything else going through the process. But I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't thinking we'd be the final. Yeah. Uh, my question, I guess, really, would well, it go I, to the planning board? You're asking board? whether it goes from here to the planning board to the city mm -hmm. commission. No, okay. it would go from here to the city, city commission. commission. Okay. Again, I, I, I hold my position. Okay. Very good. I'll move the question unless there's any other discussion. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 
All opposed? Aye. Aye. We have two opposed mm -hmm. and One, two, three. six in favor. Motion carries. All right. Uh, any other comments with respect to section 2.3? Well, there was some discussion last week with respect to um, membership, term limits, things of that nature. And <coughs> Jason's here. Did you have anything you wanted to ch chime in on? On, on membership dues, we're still. Re I think the direction you gave <coughs> us the last month was to look what they're, what's being done in other communities, and we're still researching that. And once we have that information, we'll bring it back. Okay. But we've noted the cons you know the issue, and so we'll address that as we go forward with Clarion. The, um, Gary, did you have any? Well, I think Claire, I would defer to Clarion, who does a, a lot of this. And my brief discussions with uh, principals at Clarion uh, suggested that they needed to understand why <laughs> these requirements were so funky and so unusual and so atypical, and whether or not there was a need today to keep this crazy quilt of, of, of uh, eligibility or not. And um, I, th I defer to their recommendation. I think cities that have gone through this process in the last five years have cleaned up these little pocket eligibility issues and made it much more standard and much more <coughs> sensible. And I think our commission would look very favorably on a much simpler, much easier to understand um, eligibility process. So I, I would I would be happy to um, to see what other cities who've gone through this process have come up with, and certainly support Clarion's advice in this area. I don't think there's any reason for us to keep these this crazy quilt of eligibilities any longer. For all of these. Is okay. anyone here? I, I think they're a bit archaic and. It's difficult to find qualified people who want to serve perhaps within the immediate area. And I think the city commission is informed enough to appoint people who have an interest in that area yeah. uh, to, and you know, perhaps it's a, it's a blend of people who are, you know, actual residents within the area or close surrounds and then some business people too. So we don't get it too heavily skewed just on the resident versus the business side. Mr. Chairman, I would defer to the staff here to, to, to work with Clarion to come up with a, a, you know, I think you sense the commission's inability to find people given this, these, this, this sort of 19th century approach. And, and I think there is a best practice in the field, I mean, of how to do this. I would be very interested if, in fact, Jason, you haven't had time to look at other cities, why don't we just go to Clarion, who, who's our, you know, they're our expert, they, and see what they would recommend. They definitely give us experience of what they've seen in yeah. other areas. Um, I was just talking in regards to, I think you wanted to kind of canvas what other, well, specifically in I, Florida with the mm -hmm. redevelopment. I made, what's I, I made the suggestion, and if I had probably thought a little longer on it, I would have suggested go to Clarion mm -hmm. first. Why not go to the master and uh, they can tell us what right. other cities and i think done. what we um it's you know i would say it's i think you have a good point what's brought up is you just want a, a equal you want a balance of stakeholders when yeah. it comes to an advisory board yeah and, and the eligibility you know it, it really falls on the patronage of the city commission they're the ones who are making these appointments and we they do their homework we rely on their judgment Right now, we are hamstringing the city commission from appointing people they would like to appoint to these boards because of some of the eligibility problems. Does any board member have a concern with respect to Gary, with respect to what Gary's proposing and the eligibility? And let's defer to Clarion and see what they come back with, so we can take a look at it. Well, the, the, the only one comment I have, I just I was wondering, and if they can look at why the the, the differences between the board and why is this board singled out with the only board as far as having term limits and why do the other boards not have term limits? No, all of the redevelopment boards have term limits. <laughs> they, the, and I have a comment on the term limits too. Yeah. So, so can we just as a consensus direct staff to get with Clarion and see what Clarion is, would recommend? Including term, to, including term limits. Including term limits. And, and my suggestion on term limits is that they at least try to, it's limited to two terms now of two years each. Yeah. That's four years. I think that's too short. I think yeah. it should be at least three. Uh, perhaps four, uh, you know, if if our mayor, what's the term limit on the mayor now? Is we it? don't have term limits. No, we don't. we don't. Only the redevelopment <laughs> boards have term limits in the entire city. Okay. And that just happened under 
a previous commission um, when they right. looked at redoing boards. So these and are I mean, the only boards that have term limits. And I think in Clarion the should city. give comments with respect to term limits also. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Can I suggest yeah. that um, Clarion uh, write all their comments down and all the board members have section this point uh, A2, and this is what they suggest, and that way when we go back to looking at voting the, um, on it, we could actually strike out comments, we, uh, suggestions that we don't like, and then you know approve. Well, it. it'll come back to us as a you know as a either draft. as a draft. Okay, yeah. that's and we fine. Can deal with that then. Okay, now, yeah. but I do think something that's important, and we'll get over there. Something that is important, um, the no matter whose suggestion from what the the commission and the. Uh, both residents and business owners in the city have been very clear that they do want to keep a majority of board members shall be residents. We oh, had the sorry. problem before a lot of non-residents making decisions for what was happening. And residents doesn't mean non-business owners. I mean people who live in the city, whether it's, you know. That's another issue. Right. So, but that's under your eligibility that you're talking about. And so it's very important to make sure that that's not something that we're looking at changing, no matter what happens with the other criteria, that it still needs to be people who live here. And then I personally think we should get go back to no term limits at all. I, I don't see the need in a community this size to hamstring any board, which is what I think term limits do. That's just my personal opinion. I would just take them back out. I know the commission <coughs> just put them back in, but you know, we have it here and we're being asked to comment as a board. Yeah, so I would say. She said that was the previous board. commission. It was the previous and commission. And not this commission, which there's been some. Right, because it, it does hamstring them. If you look at the hard. situation, Tracy, when that happened, we had, we had a commission that had not appointed the members of the boards and they were looking for a politically correct way out without inviting people off the boards by not reappointing well them. the commission just didn't have the backbone to right. do what well, other commissions to, had I, done before I'm them trying to, i'm trying board to members, say that in a little different right. way and no i just and, go uh, for it they need to, they, the commission just shirked their duty yeah and uh, they did it this way and they hamstrung future commissions when all they have well to do the bottom line is and i think the city commission has asked themselves is is it working it's and the answer is no, new. it is yeah. currently not working. So let's recommend tweaking it or changing it. And it's always subject to okay. change by, by commissions in the future. But right now, let's see if we can make it work better. All right, mm -hmm. so we'll talk with Clarion about that too, correct, Jason? Yes. All right, any other comments with respect to 2.3? One quick one. I, Go ahead. I would like to support Mrs. Remark's suggestion that the residency that we reaffirm the commission's um, decision on the majority resident. I, uh, I agree. I think issue. you should have. I mean, you either should be living within the exact area or the near surrounds or have substantial right. involvement with respect right. to a business. But I also think there needs to be a, um, add, add a substantial amount of actual residents. Yes, that's what I would Okay. Yeah. Uh, on the board. Well, right now there's a uh, the, the rule is a majority of mm -hmm. the board has to be residents of the city. Whether they own businesses or not isn't the issue. They have to be residents of the city. The r other can be residents of other cities if they own businesses here. It's a, there's a variety of other eligibility. But right now it's my understanding that the current rule is a majority of the boards must be have legal residents <laughs> within the mm -hmm. city, not own a business, not pay taxes, but be legal residents of the city. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Mr. Berger? That's how I understand yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Lip. Right now, comment on that. I, I, yeah. That's one part of this. Well, Dave. That's okay. No, no, no. You're not a right. they got term. No, Dave, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's one part of this I, I don't agree with is that, especially on this board right now, you're, you're barely making that, that, that minimum as far as resident versus uh, business owners. And next month, we, it'll be, I'm not sure where Truman lives, but uh, without Truman, you're gonna be a 4-4 split as far as residents mm -hmm. and non-residents. He lives board. in the city. Okay, but I'm saying it, 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 it's the same problem that the police chief has had, or has had with his resident. There's, 
I'm going to I'm going to not be a resident of Daytona Beach for the first time come uh, next month. But I still have businesses in three redevelopment areas in mm -hmm. Daytona Beach, and I, I don't I don't agree with the fact that just because you don't live here, you're not making a sound decision for that that particular area. I don't think Daytona anybody Beach. has said that. It's it's the majority. We had a downtown redevelopment I know, but board what, where you're, not you're, you're one member about lived in our city. You were no. talking about hamstringing the city commission not be able to find people. The reason I'm here right now is because the city couldn't find any residents in the South Atlantic Avenue to take my spot. Well, we would like to simplify that by eliminating the requirement of that there be a resident in a part of the city where there are no residences like <laughs> South Atlantic. Well, there are that's our point. South that's why we're going to Clarion. But you have the same problem in the Main Street area as you do in the downtown area. You don't. You, you don't. You have. You have people that live here, but they. They don't really. They could. In the, and Gary, because I've, I've lived here all my life, you got people living in the Main Street area that could give a rat's behind about what goes on in the Main Street. It's area. It's resident of the city, not of the Main I, Street area. All I'm saying is that's part of the thing I don't agree with. It shouldn't be a, a majority residence on on these boards. Of the city, if they have four businesses in within the three redevelopment areas. Well, I. I th if you remember the discussion that the commission had during this issue, it took them a year to resolve it. And the final resolution was let's give it a try and see whether or not the majority residency requirement hasn't ha hamstrung the commission. It's finding people who live, who, it's the subsets of eligibility mm -hmm. that have caused the problems, not living in the city. Look at our board. I mean, in the reappointment process here, uh, we didn't have any problem on the citywide resident eligibility, but some of these other little crazy quilt, these 19th century requirements can cause a problem. Let, and let, I think they, I think Reed, you know, maybe we could ask the staff from your perspective, your guys are professionals in this, is there any reason in the, today for us to continue with these discrete degrees of eligibility? No, and I was just going to mention the South Atlantic. Uh, I think we need to just drop that. I mean, the, the, yeah. that Main Street versus South Atlantic, you yeah. have to have a board members from each. That That mm -hmm. is really I handicapped. Kooky. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I, I agree. There, there's just the, the fewer limitations, the better. The, the, the whole point is to try to get people uh, involved that do care, that are passionate about um, redevelopment uh, of these areas. And... Uh, uh, then we can all get something done. Okay. Very good. All right, any other further comments on 2.3? Very good. Um, move on to redevelopment projects update. Reed, Jason. Uh, are we going? Oh, wait, I'm we sorry. Were we, <laughs> yeah, we got more? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get it. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> no, you may not do this all oh, tonight. Um, I don't think we have to go back over the review procedures because I think you already talked about mm -hmm. the issues. Um, uh, we, you know, we've noted the issue with uh, the concerns about the, the oh, festivals. You already dealt with that under the, the board uh, duties. Uh, now what I would jump to is... Uh, the zoning districts, what I'd like to do, um, I'll try to make it as painless as possible, is to go through the zoning districts. Now, I think, as I discussed, I uh, gave you a brief overview last month. Um, in terms of the zoning districts, there are currently eight zoning districts in the Main Street redevelopment area. Essentially, Clarion's been directed to carry those through to the new uh, zoning code, and then we are adding three new ones uh, to deal with the areas within um, Main Street that are do not currently have specific zoning their the zoning district specific to the to the Main Street area um, so what I'll do I just want to kind of go through just kind of highlights on these different uh, zoning districts kind of get your feedback um, point out some things that we as staff have already seen get your feedback to see if you know you concur with our as, uh, comments as you're going through these zoning districts can you um, explain like a where they a are between yeah because yes I, I have I, I have mentioned it last at the last meeting if you could provide us a redevelopment map but I don't think you did that did we provide the maps I guess we 
No? Okay. Sorry. But I have them in the presentation, so I'll generally describe where okay. they are. Okay. Um, but we'll get you that map. Um, I'm going to bring it up again next meeting. <laughs> Um, let's see. So the zoning districts are on f uh, the basic, the development standards for the zoning districts are start for Main Street in what's page 4 60. Article 4 is the uh, essentially the development standards for each zoning district. And then Article 5 is what tells you what uses are permitted or what's a conditional use. And that chart starts on, so if you have your um, book with you, you might want to be flipping between those two pages between 4-60 and then the use matrix starts for redevelopment areas on 5-14. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have that tabulated. So the first zoning district is the RDB1 zoning district. It's essentially the hotel mixed use. It is located essentially along, it's on the east side of A1A, it's all it's the oceanfront properties. Um, you know, a lot of this is already developed. This is the Hilton, the the ocean, um, ocean walk project, and, and then some of the other larger hotels. So it's it's basically designed to to encourage the development of large scale hotel projects. And in terms of the uses, it allows when it comes to multifamily, uh, residential allows multifamily. And then visitor accommodation has hotels in it. Um, and then institutional, um, uh, there are some, and the other thing just to keep in mind, uh, they are carrying through all the zoning district, or all the uses in each, they're supposed to be carrying through what's allowed currently in RDB1. In some cases in the new, develop, in the development of the new code, Clarion is adding some new uh, uses, like specific uses, like for instance, in our current code, our retail use is very broad. When you look at the code, this, the draft code, they're breaking it down into some more specific uses. So w what we have to do is carefully translate that to how they're uh, making that change in the code in terms of allow what uses to be allowed in these zoning districts. Do you think helicopter landing <laughs> is going to raise an issue with residential <laughs> neighborhoods that have bought the e That's zone there. and about Main Street. I mean, we had we tried to have a helicopter during uh, Embry Riddle's <laughs> air show, and it was hell to pay if you remember the helicopters going up and down the yeah. beach. I mean, you know. If Again, that's just something if, uh, if you don't feel that's something that's compatible, it doesn't necessarily have to be in there. I don't think that's compatible yeah. with a large number of residents who live adjacent to this area, and it stands out to me. Uh, out of everything else, it just sort of looms mm -hmm. out as something that hasn't really been thought through. I'm going to agree with Gary because a few years ago, they were doing the helicopters uh, during bike week, uh, and they were consistently flying 100 feet above treetops uh, in a pattern and every, you know, there were actually two helicopters running at one point and they were running 15 minutes flight. So average every seven and a half minutes, we had helicopters 100 feet over our house uh, and you couldn't even hear yourself talk. Uh, mm -hmm. And they were supposed to be flying at 500 feet according to the FAA. Uh, and the only way to complain about it was to try and deal with the FAA. And of course they're not open on weekends and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was, it was a real yeah. nightmare. I can't um, imagine Clary. Wait, but this, could, this, could is, I interrupt wait, this is a, for um, a helicopter landing on top of a hotel district. So well, how is it going to get there? What's that? How is it going to get there? Out, is it going to just come vertically out of the firmament? It's going to have to fly over the over the island. There if are I, some important visitors that may have to have a special landing on top of a hotel, use the elevator to get to their room that can't go through the... Okay, before you guys go on, let me... This is what we currently have. Right? Okay. Um, no, no helicopter, helicopter landing is a new. Plan. Okay, that's yeah. new because yeah. that's why it's going to, on some they put a question mark, add with a question mark, and on others they just have it in. That's, so that's what you're I looking in the add. present, you're looking in the PowerPoint presentation? Yes. No, that's me because I'm just going through looking what they're doing, and that's some of the stuff I I'm going to bring up. helicopter is, I think it's incompatible. Right. Uh, just from. One right now they have it as a conditional use in the right. draft. Currently, but currently, current, the code. current land development code, because we've had helicopters, because the one thing to be really clear on, whatever is currently in the loud in the land development code 
is not being taken out because then you get into eminent domain. We don't you don't have helicopter landing pads in the current land development. You have phase. helicopter use. Well, that's, it's, that's why I'm asking what is current. What about the, you know, what about the parking garage? Isn't that part of the intermodal thing there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever Wasn't is currently allowed is there. not going to be removed, just so you understand that. Well, really because <laughs> it's, it's a whole legal problem of you're right. taking away property rights. Right. Right. I drink. So I, I, just wanted to be, I just wanted to be clear <coughs> what was in there currently, because I know we've had helicopters. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, then let's yeah, we ask do. The question. Let's ask the question. Yeah, About we can verify just to double. You know, there are there are some there are some things in what Clarion's done. They sometimes have not quite put things in the right place. So, yeah. okay. So I guess what I'm hearing, if it's already allowed, we'll keep it. And I don't think it's that uncommon, especially. Um, I understand the the issue with transition with the. Um, or compatibility with the, the residences nearby, but here you're talking about particular uses just along the ocean, and I think um, I don't know who was saying it, but I mean it's feasible that somebody might build a hotel and put a landing, you know, pad on top of the well, hotel. Clarion, this is, uh, Clarion is thinking along those lines that there would be a helicopter service from our airport directly to a hotel on a regular basis. When I, I don't know if they're exactly thinking, they're just carrying f like. What Tracy's saying, they're just trying, they're carrying forward what's in the existing code. Okay, that's yeah, fine. if yeah. it's existing, legal staff I know has already told planning you're not taking out things that are already allowed because well, that becomes a problem. And landing pads are different. This doesn't say different. landing pad. I don't see well, helicopter this, landing. Landing. It's conditional. You usually have them during special events. This doesn't necessarily mean on a hotel roof, it just means somewhere in that zoning area. Yeah. That's Chase. all I'm saying. If it's allowed already, it's not going to come right. out. So we'll, have to, have to we'll have to check into that. It's, no, it's not in the use so. chart, but there's I'll a possibility allow. it's yes, somewhere it else. Is. They, they, they okay. come and land on the pier, and they, they yes. But I need to clarify something here. It's, it's wild. It, it shows in here, Jason, RDB1, it shows that the, this is what Clarion is saying. It's special use or a public uh, uh, use permit. Conditional. Where are you and, at? And those are, I'm on uh, page 5-17. Uh, Right, helicopter landing facility, and if I'm reading this right, correct me. It's it's giving us information here that says it's special use. Yeah, it's it's a special use it, or a semi-public use. So that special use has to be approved by city commission. It it and can. And it's a current special use. I'm telling you guys, yeah. this is a current special right. use in our code. Right, not a so conditional. this whole conversation is moot. Although it's been denied <laughs> by the commission. Uh, repeatedly over the right. last five years. Yeah, right. They can deny it. Okay. But they still they can deny them, okay. but they still can't take All it right. out. Is what okay. has happened. That's okay. I got yeah. a, I have a question. This is going to go to Tracy because she was on the commission when I made the phone call to her. <laughs> when you were there, we had helicopter running a tourist business up and down. Supposedly mm -hmm. they were supposed to go south along the along the shoreline and then back to the pier. Mm -hmm. east and then back to the pier. Well, they were going south along the shoreline and then coming back over the residential area. Mm -hmm. So is, is, are what you're saying now, that is still allowed? It won't be taken out? Under a special use permit. Now, if they violate their, their permit, but that what I am saying is the fact that you can still have helicopter use, right. helicopter land. However, the special permit is set up in the land development code, that's still allowed. Not to come over the resident. I mean, obviously, it was a problem there, but okay. this is still allowed as a special use They'll or a semi-public use. A map with right. The permit to show and they're the supposed to follow that permit, just like Main Street Station, for instance, is supposed to follow the, the rules on their permit okay, for noise. Can you? I guess my question is, you because you've been there in, in planning board and in the city commission, can you have a special where they want to? You know, bring somebody in from the airport and bring them to the to the, to the Hilton State. But can we limit it? Can we limit to, to no 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 helicopter rides up and down the, the the coast? Like, what's what happens is on a Friday they're going to start coming over the residential area. You can't get hold of anybody from Friday to Sunday. So all weekend, which would happen at our house, all weekend they were flying. You know, I could hit them with a stone almost. Going you over could make a recommendation in this that in the special use or in the current process which allows the helicopter 
that what they look at doing is getting flight plans or whatever and that there's a way then to deal with that if they violate it. Yeah, but you just it, can't it. take it out is all you, can, okay. you can't do. You can make recommendations on how it should be done, yeah, but you can't remove mm -hmm. the use. Yeah, you can dictate how it's operated. Yes. It shouldn't matter anyway. You're not going to be living in the city of Daytona anymore. Well, well yes, it should matter. Have, okay. but see, I still care about the Tracy, some communities have eliminated the use. Some communities have possibly no reflection on carry, have a different city attorney. Our city attorney has taken the legal position okay. that taking out uses is going to put us in the taking away rights. And that puts us under the Burt, what is it, Burt Fair, Burt Reams, whatever. <laughs> Bert Harris. He, Bert Harris, thank you. I knew that it was the last yeah, name okay. somewhere. Bert Harris. It it will make us fall under the Bert Harris. There has to be a loss. Currently there is no law. I mean, how do you prove a loss when there are no existing helicopter rides? This is your point is is absolutely accurate if you're denying an active business. It's the use well, of its It's what legal has said, not oh, what I have said. Okay. <laughs> and you know, I, I right. think I think we can express strong reservation with respect to the operation of any helicopter tourism operations mm -hmm. landing anywhere or flying not over. The impact, not the impact residential neighborhood. Right. Or flight patterns, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And, and so we have a strong reservation or objection with respect to that. And next point. Okay. <laughs> I think we understand, so we'll look into it. Um, the, I think under telecommunications, you see that that's uh, in for an ad. I think that should probably be added back into the zoning district. Uh, right now, they are allowed uh, under the current provisions to put telecommunication towers. Especially, I don't, you know, I don't think it'll have the impact, especially on the taller or the larger buildings on the ocean front. Um, the um, in terms of looking at the commercial uses. Um, you have a lot of business uses that are conditional existing. Um, again, I believe when you look into our existing code, they're conditional as they're part of mixed use projects. Right. Again, this is all about having hotels, but you want to be able to allow certain services within on the ground level of the hotel. Uh, the one thing we might want to add in, you'll see in the list, is uh, parcel services. In my reading of the definition is it would be like a UPS or a Kinko's or something. So we might want to just add that in. So it's potential that hotel might want to have some sort of, you know, especially if you're having a convention hotel, many of them have Jason Kinko business services when they're having those conventions. When you say that, though, like UPS, are you talking about their store. a garage? Facility. The store. Facility. A facility? No, 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 no. No, 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 no not the, like not the distribution store, center. Like a satellite store. store. The, yes. Okay. Because it falls under commercial use, not industrial, I think, okay. is where the distribution center of okay. UPS. But again, one of the things when I was going through this presentation, and I, I won't get into too much detail, but I do know, because uh, we were starting to look at this at the downtown board, um, there's some tightening on the definitions of the uses that need to be done. I don't know if that came up in the planning board, those special committees. Um, we're seeing some conflicting, you know, like, definitions. The, the, yeah, definitions of uses. But again, so just. Just so you know, when I say parcel services, I, I'm thinking the the, the, you, the store, notes. yeah, the store, and we'll but, just make sure that definition relates to that. And by the way, I stand corrected. Under every RDB one, RDB two, you have a little map, map and it does right. show mm -hmm. a highlighted portion. Yes, that, that guy yeah, I highlighted did it in red in the yeah, PowerPoint. I appreciate that. So you kind of did what I wanted to. Kind of. It's know. hard to print out a good map, though. It's, you no, but that, that, at least okay. I'm able to visualize right. where I'm talking about. And internet cafes, I just, I assume that they. They're under hard, a moratorium. That, yeah, because that's, that's my concern. That's why I have my right. for the internet cafes, because we don't want to get into the problem. With I the think they're in there listed. That issue's already come up. It's going to be addressed. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at their definition, it kind of sounds, you know, yeah, it's, it's, sound, it, no it's not. Sure it sounds very vanilla, but we, 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 oh, but we have another concern that's right, going on right now. Gambling. And we'll be dealing yeah. with that definition. Right. Well, or just leave it as, as part of the. Um, uh, business services where you know like the kink, uh, kinkos or what have you have internet station yeah that's one way to do it yeah well uh, it, it, I, 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 don't, I mean i don't know if you know the problems that like seminole north county are yeah, having with the internet cafes that turn into a, more of a gambling venue because of the internet because of 
online gambling, right. and then the crime yeah. problem that gets associated with right. that. Right. Right. So, I mean, almost <laughs> everywhere you go has Wi-Fi service, stuff like that. Right. So, I, 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 I don't see internet cafes. As a need now. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a need. It's possible. Because everybody's right. walking around. And I'll tell you one thing, when you look at that use matrix, you know, they're pulling some of this, so, you know, not only are they pulling what we have existing in our code, but also what they've done in other cities and different trends over probably the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. And at one point, there probably was a trend to have internet cafes, yeah. but Until you're right. My bad. Well, <laughs> things happen in Florida. <laughs> so. What's the difference between a restaurant and specialty eating? Ah, special eating, when you look at the definition, is your ice cream shops, it's your coffee shops, so we want to add those in. I believe they're Absolutely. leaving those out, and they need to be added in. Okay, yeah, they're, they're critical. Yes. Um, so a lot of those smaller, if you look at the, the yeah, the, not your full-scale restaurants, but your coffee shops, I'm trying to think, yogurt shops, you know, mm -hmm. yep. um, coffee, uh, ice cream shops would fall under that, so we want to add that back in. Um, I, th I think in some of these uses they're missing. Um, That's donuts also. Yeah, <laughs> donut shops, yes. Cupcake stores. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything. Um, in terms of retail uses, uh, I would, you know, most, again, these are conditional uses as they relate to larger mixed-use projects in the zoning district. That's how it currently is in the code. Uh, we might want to think about adding back in Banks, uh, never know if, again, I don't know if we have a full-scale bank, but I could see a hotel that might have a small financial, or, and if you look at the definition of banks or financial services, it's not just your traditional bank, it's, it could be a small financial services and, you know, you know if you've got international, uh, yeah, something yeah. like that. What about ATMs, are, are they? Are I think it would be like an accessory use in another <laughs> section, but, I, you know, I could see a potential of a hotel having uh, a small, I don't know if it would be a full-scale bank like you see downtown, but foreign something in the exchange. hotel, foreign exchange. That, yeah. you know. um, well, we just don't want to trap you're, that. You're that's talking right. about those then in the hotel use. You're the not talking about, right. Separate, right. Okay. All these conditional uses are as they relate to a large-scale price, how okay. it words now, reads right now in our DB1. Yeah, because I, mean, yeah. I do not? think that's important. Yeah. Let's add it. Um, so that's really the only comments I have on RDB1, unless there's anything else you see in the use charts that uh, you feel it needs to be changed in what they're doing or missing. I'll go on to RDB2. Uh, oh, just, I'm sorry, one other thing on the RDB1. In terms of the uh, development standards are on page 4-60, uh, they have a not, uh, they don't have a maximum four area ratio, so we'll need to um, get them to change that, at least have it correspond with the underlying land use, which I believe in that area would be high intensity mixed use. I know we had this whole <laughs> discussion about four area ratios, but um, that would be a four area ratio of 10 it, with that corresponding land use. With respect to RDB1, what about spas, massage, things of that nature? Ah. I know there had been a discussion about that, and I don't see it in there. And yeah, that's that's a good point. Again, and probably you want as a conditional use as related to a hotel, yeah. not yeah. But yeah, you definitely I think need to have spa and massage and well, it says personal services, and that's probably co that probably covers it. I, would think. I know currently in our code that's how it's used, but um, yeah. we need to look at the definitions. Look, yeah, sure look at definitions. Got, uh, the plazas, spa facilities are, are were personal services. No, Let me, uh, additional use in RDB one. Yeah, but it's the plaza. <coughs> Let me just look at something real. The well, that's how they no, got it's it. not. But that's how they got it. That's how they got it. Yeah. For, um, <laughs> yeah, right now, personal service establishment, the definition of it's, uh, I believe they're carrying forward our current definition, yeah. um, which calls um, needs of personal nature, examples, hair salons, training salons, nail, uh, nail care, and that's a conditional use, what they're saying. Okay, and that would include a spa and massage? We can um, maybe let me make a note that the definition needs to be. 
Yeah, I think fleshed it out. Should a note bit. that it should cite it. Yeah, probably as an example. It's currently that's how they include it. Okay, um, so other than that, I'll go on to well, one one quick question and uh, how it would be covered in here, whatever the kiosk kind of thing that you see in other tourism areas. We got some here for you know timeshares, but you go to the Keys or Hawaii or whatever, and you see these places where you can go to one spot and they can refer you to golfing, kayaking, all this kind of thing. Uh, is that covered within here? Somewhere? I think that was the solicitation that booth, and we kind of talked about that the last meeting, and that would carry forward, and I, that should be under accessory uses. Yeah. And there's another, that, and I have. It doesn't show up on here, but it is in the draft. And they're draft. limited. They're limited by. Uh, it is in the draft. Okay. By the square, there's a square foot square limiting. Foot yeah. yeah. 5 90 is where all the accessory uses are. Yeah, it's under the article on uses. Okay, as long as we have there it in there, in there. there. It's in there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, but they, they provide a nice service, and you know, well, if you don't get yeah, in other areas. Yes. <laughs> they're well, not in every redevelopment zoning district, they're only in a couple of different ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they're very clear on it. Yeah. As long as you're selling more than a timeshare, it's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll move on to the RDB 2. RDB2 zoning district, this is essentially along Main Street, this tr the traditional development patterns of Main Street. Uh, looking f you're looking for urban infill, um, you're generally looking for retail restaurant on the first floor and then um, professional services, residential on the upper floors. Um, <coughs> the, uh, again, looking at the use chart, um, we probably want to uh, deal with the they don't have the FAR max in that one just make sure it corresponds with the uh, with the underlying uh, land use well, that should in there be throughout right yeah. yeah you'll hear that comment but they just, just some of them they draw well first of all the part of the issue is um, there's some they're carrying forward some flaws in our current right development standards so we had a opportunity to fix it well <laughs> um, again just so you know, you know, the Main Street, it doesn't cover the entire length of Main Street. It's essentially from uh, Main Street uh, to just from uh, Peninsula. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, you, Hollywood. you don't mean that, uh, that Clarion is bringing forward flaws and you're allowing them to? No, we're continue. addressing them all. Okay. That's what we're pointing out here. Okay. And, and that's where we want your feedback. If there's things, you know, it's, it's quite a large undertaking, so, you know, and we have a lot of staff looking at it, but if more eyes looking at it, any any issues that we need to address, let me know. Um, in terms of uses, it's, uh, again, multifamily, upper story dwelling. The upper story dwelling, that is a new use. That's just to clarify, uh, be honest, on our current code, one of the issues is we allow multifamily in the zone, you know, the same thing we have downtown, we allow in, in, the, in the traditional development area. But if so, what our code doesn't allow is if somebody just has a shop and then one resident above, technically you can't have that. So under the new code, they've addressed it by Lot, having this new use called upper story dwelling Thank so that's God. good yeah. good that they're addressing that um, in terms of commercial I would uh, maybe I would uh, suggest adding bank again back into this particular uh, Let's zoning do district that. Let's do that. and and again parcel services again you know now this particular area of Main Street isn't really designed to have the large-scale projects but I think you still would have maybe the corresponding Type services uh, either for the nearby residences or the the, the tourist, or the right? Means, uh, yeah. Um, and again, upper floor is the uh, business and professional services allowed in that area. Why and would <coughs> why would you not have professional services and offices on the first level? Well, I mean, that's just a policy question for this board. <coughs> I think the, in the past, uh, when they did the redevelopment er efforts, um, the, when you have professional offices on the ground floor, it kind of creates a dead space. What you're trying to create along Main Street and the same thing we have over on Beach Street in downtown is you want the retail restaurants, creates more activity, draws people down the street. 
versus when you have offices. And a good example of this is in downtown, look at the, the block between ISB and Bay Street where the safety council is. You, know, you have several shops and all of a sudden you hit some just offices, offices. and yeah. basically the shoppers stop walking there because they think there's nothing beyond it, but you do have some restaurants and stores at the other end of the block. It just, it just creates, you're trying to, in that traditional uh, Main Street area, you're trying to create a um, activity that draws people down, and I think the E-Zone, if you look at the E-Zone master plan, talks about yeah, that also. Yeah, and I'd support that, really, if you think through it. You know, I, I remember the controversy over the realtor who wanted the ground floor office on, on Beach Street. Yeah. And, and he found up, he wound up getting it <laughs> after two or three years. Well, they've ended up allowing one, one per block. One, yeah, yeah, but. yeah, this was a real, it caused a lab on Beach Street, but, I, but in the reasoning against it, I think, I think it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And on Main Street, it would make tremendous sense not to have professional offices. I think we do, we have lawyers' offices uh, closer to the river on the south side of the street there. And at night, they're, at five o'clock, they're completely dead, closed up, shuttered, and dead. And I think we're trying to get away from that on, on Main Street. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's what I'm thinking. Are you thinking of the attorney on, on Seabreeze? Yeah. No, on Main Street, we, uh, we had, uh, maybe we don't have them anymore, but we had lawyers on the ground floor on Main Street uh, across from the laundromat in that stretch of buildings mm -hmm. owned by the and judge. And Stevens Tire? No, no, way, way, way east of that. <laughs> way, way east of that. Across from the laundromat. Yeah. I don't laundromat. think there's anybody there now. Yeah. We had several I'm thinking of the dry cleaner. Yeah, I'm I thinking of the I don't think they're there currently. Okay. Yeah. No, there's no You're going way back. You're going way back. I do go way back. <laughs> 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 that one had a movie theater on All right, Jason, <laughs> let's go. Okay. Okay. No, within 10 years. It's within um, 10 years. Okay. Oops. Mm -hmm. So I don't. So essentially, looking at the retail, it's it's gift shops, floor shops, uh, type of uses. That I think we're looking for in the Main Street area. I don't see anything additional to add there. Um, and then the last thing to talk about is food establishments. Um, hey Jason, go back just because I, I see it in a liquor store. Do you want to just touch? Oh yeah, we probably do need some feedback on that. Um, in terms of how we want to deal with um, which which uh, you're still in the one liquor. yeah package stores um, I mean remember this would trap in we can have it as a conditional use um, you know this would be everything from a you know something as a wine store and I think that's really what's most intended for yeah. for Main Street we can have the conditions written to that or um, it would not be, be extensive as like an ABC liquor, which is, there's two different licenses when it comes to the liquor stores. Right. So there's the two APS, which is the beer and wine, and the four APS, which is the full liquor store. Currently, those full liquor stores only can be in shopping centers. Well, we have them. Well, we have them on A1A. Well, they might be grandfathered yeah, in, but. Grandfathered in. in. Yeah. But right now, the regulations are. Okay. They're just in shop. The, the full, you know, like the ABC liquor type or. A real package store. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, I guess, read you bring it up. You know, w you know, what's the feedback from the board on the liquor store? Do, you know, do you want us to be able to still continue to allow at least you know wine, you know, like a beer and wine type of stuff? We did have like one guy who was up in Ormond Beach was interested in bringing his wine store down into the Main Street area. Uh, I think is a you know you go over to. Park Avenue and yeah. Winter Park, and there's several little wine, wine places Beast where you can go Road. in and you can get a glass and sit down. You can buy a bottle, do all that. Well, this is something different, though. This is a well, store, are you, even sales. Yeah. Well, we'll get to what you're talking about—a wine, That's a wine bar. Cheap. But yeah. he's saying okay. that you could buy packaged liquor yeah. to go. But they got to go together, so you got to allow the the um, the re the retail store aspect, which is the liquor store, and you write the conditions so it's just the beer and wine sales. And then when so I get the to the food, it's the boutique bar. Not open the bottle right. in the store right. and drink it. Right. right. Is is there a reason we don't want to have? Because let, let's face it, we're not going to get a Publix in this zone or in this area, so we don't have to worry about a liquor store then if it has to be tied into a grocery store or a shopping center. 
Teresa, what do you think on having a, a package store on Main Street? Uh, <coughs> I defer to the. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I, I, I do not have one. I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. I, think you just I, I, I really do defer to what professional planners. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm a, a professional and planner and an, I drink. And in fact, <laughs> I like cigars too. But uh, what, I, what I think is uh, I, what we did in downtown, I think, is a good model. And, and if you've That's looked what I, at yeah. what we've Let's, done there. It, it, those boutique and the and if you go down there now to what is it McKay's next to McKay's there's a nice the bottle little, caps is a beer and wine just a two eight so it's, and it's working yeah, yeah. I see I think a straight package store does become problematic I agree a straight agree. package store it, it needs to have that retail aspect to it absolutely that social aspect to it yeah absolutely and no if there is however the licensing works because I know that gets really complicated well, we, well, no we, takeaway windows. You go mm. in the store. <laughs> Everything's in the store. Absolutely. Yeah. Jason. Okay. Um, now, when it comes to uh, food establishments, uh, carrying for the bars is conditional uses in the in this zoning district. Boutique bars, that would be new. That's uh, what we began to talk about. That would be associated, uh, again, caring for what we did in downtown. That's how you would allow the wine bar aspect of, um, of, right. of the retail uh, beer and wine. Um, and then uh, we don't need to talk about the internet. I think we've dealt with the <laughs> cafe. Brew pub, that's something new. Uh, I think that you would want to allow that. Again, just a mix of restaurant yeah. and, and um, entertainment uses and then I think we already had the discussion about add the specialty eating uses that's your ice cream shops and coffee shops by brew pub do you mean on-site brewing like out at Let me see how it, yeah again I think this is a yeah this is again another trend in planning that probably popped up during the 90s and they're you know they probably put it in their other codes and they're carrying it forward to ours Microbrewery. yeah okay. it's the mic um, it's, the definition is drinking establishment that produces, yeah, they produce the stuff on, on site. site. Yeah. And because then I, you have an associated restaurant or. Okay, because I will say, like out with BJ's, when I remember when that came to the planning board, they actually do have a takeout for their on site brewing, their micro brewing, my, their, their beer. <laughs> <laughs> and that takeout is a little different than a package store takeout because they're doing it on site so and it's a restaurant. I but there the had to be, there was something that had to happen at the planning board level and I can't remember okay. how they did it special use something because normally you can't out in that zoning go do that so whatever had to happen there would have to be Care taken into account yeah, here so it doesn't really just turn into to, again a straight package yeah, store. Totally. well because most restaurants like if, yeah, you go, if, I, if you go to the oyster pub and order a sandwich you can't take a beer to go Wait, which, right, which but a, my, a brew pub, a, you can. You can go it? just get their brews and, and take their right. brews and leave with them. the package. A commercial planned um, development. That's why you could have spelled it in within. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, it did go it. through a PD. But the, yeah, it was a PD process. But there was also, I don't know. There was know, still something else I thought. I, I know we dealt with an issue. I can't remember if it was resolved or not. Um, we, you know, we were doing some tweaking to the. Because even the PD didn't allow it because of the licensing or something. There was something that had to happen. didn't have takeout on internet. Yeah. Well, I know there was an issue out there, and I can't remember how, yeah, to how we that resolved it. something to find out. We did some tweaks to the alcohol yes, we provisions did. citywide. To allow it? To allow it? Well, there was an issue like, with um, Tijuana Flats. Like they, our alcohol provisions, as they were, were not allowing like a restaurant like that to sell. Um, like you had to have beer from a tap, and you right. know they just sell it in the bottle. Right. Or we had to right. make some revisions. Right. Right. There's a difference. Remember that? Yeah. I'd have I to. I can't remember it. It was very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Like alcohol is. <laughs> we'll look in. Um, okay. Moving on, Jason. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let me move on to. Uh, it should go a little quicker, as because these, each of these zoning districts kind of build upon each other. Gateway mixed use is very similar to. It's just the other. It's the portion of Main Street closer to the river. Basically, it's the same provisions as uh, um, 
uh, it's the rest of Main Street. The only thing it adds is the ability to have some auto-related type uses because this is down towards the end where you have the the uh, well the gas station. You have Stevens Auto. Um, so essentially, that's the same. So I think most of my comments from RDB2 mm -hmm. would just carry forward. And, we're, and just what you see in there, the only difference between RDB2 and RDB3 is we're carrying forward those conditional use provisions as it relates to auto-related uses down at that end. And, uh, and I think our direction is to uh, keep... And you're all keep happy with that. Well, remember, we have the E-zone. Which you know, it's so either they do the E-zone overlay... Which trumps it. Well, how... They well, can either... Either or. Develop to that, or they have to stick to the exact underlying right. zoning. Yeah. So hopefully you might see some of that move on. Yeah. And then we can redo it all. Yeah. No evidence. Um, so if there's, unless there's any other specific questions on RDB3, I'll just move on. Um, I'm trying to see if I had any. I didn't know. It looks like they got the use or the uh, development standards <coughs> fairly correct. So. Uh, in RDB4, this is board, again, this is very similar to RDB2. The only difference is this is, uh, uh, this is along the boardwalk. This is oh, Dino zoning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. You can't vote. <laughs> you can't vote. <laughs> Say nothing. Um, and essentially, it's the same, but it allows more amusement uses yeah. in that district. So a lot of the comments are about the same. Yeah, amusements, but no jester. <laughs> <laughs> so unless there's any questions about the RDB4. Why do you have Boardwalk Ad? Oh, maybe there is something I need to talk to you about. Page so, 17. I ah, this, either I'm going to have to talk to Clarion about the definition of parks and parkway, or maybe we need to have a, de uh, a separate use called Boardwalk. Boardwalk, Again, okay. I think separate boardwalk definition. Absolutely. No, I think, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I do too. <coughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I, I really I, think you need to have it its own. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Again, yeah. this is, you know, they've, they've done codes in Henderson yeah. and places that don't have boardwalks. So, yeah. so yeah, I think we will add that. Um, and we'll check on the helicopter landing issue as mm -hmm. we talked about in the RDB1. And I think the only other thing is parcel services. I've already talked about why we'd add that. Yeah. And then special eating, why we'd add that. So and peer, add that? Yes, and peer. Uh, should allow our peer, which exists. From <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. In case it blows down, we got to rebuild it. Yeah. Yeah, if it closed down for more than three months, then you wouldn't be able to rebuild the peer. <laughs> so, <laughs> that be good. Um, right now. <laughs> no, they'd be out there on plywood rafts fishing, right? <laughs> well, they almost had that, uh, uh, the ball fall on the pier just recently. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they removed it. Yeah, that yeah, it fell Sunday night. Yeah. All right. Okay, RDB5, unless there's any other well, questions on RDB4. Mm -hmm. RDB5 is Atlantic Avenue retail. Really the only difference here, I think you know, we had uh, quite a lengthy discussion on a few months. Well, I don't know if some of our new board members were here, but remember this is the big difference in this zoning code, and we probably through this process, uh, especially as we get to module three, three, we'll need to deal with. This is the zone district. The only difference between it and um, Main Street is the fact it doesn't allow parking. Right. Yeah, and that's and that's creating some of the vacancies along right. Atlantic Avenue. I have a question, um, and I'm more concerned on the east side of RDB five than I am on the west side. Why do they not allow, as a um, at least as a um, um, special use permit uh, restaurants with drive through services when we had a Wendy's that was there and we used to have a steak and shake that was there and both of them had drive through services well again um, now this is kind of where I guess that's where we need the feedback from the board this is where um, they are starting to break down the difference between you know, we don't currently have this in the code per se, unless it's a condition. Somewhere we do have some development conditions where you don't allow drive through. So I'll have to yeah. double check and see how That's it's why currently I clarified written in RDB5. It. On the east side right. of RDB5, I do not see a problem with having, in other words, along A1A on the east side where Wendy's and Steak and Shake used to be. And McDonald's. Yeah, McDonald's. Well, McDonald's was RDB4. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're talking about RDB5 now. 
I think that we should allow uh, for, uh, as a special use, that way you give the power to the city commission, yeah. um, the restaurants with drive-through services. That way they look at the surrounding area, see if it's gonna be problematic to the neighborhoods, and then, but they have the ability to grant the, um, RDB. Granted, especially what is that so terrible parking that? there that yeah you what know? are the implications of that well, you have an empty well right rdb5 now. isn't on the east side yeah. of a1a yeah it is yeah it is, it is south, of street. Street. south of main street oh where well, it's on yeah. ocean avenue yeah okay yeah all right which, which i isn't think it, isn't it in conflict with the whole e-zone yes, where we're is. trying to try new and to some extent it's in conflict yeah. with the redevelopment what, that, just the overall redevelopment right, plan that, yeah. we're on that side we're trying to package larger de scale Backwell. developments mm -hmm. on that side instead of the <laughs> diversity of ownership is that how it is in the e-zone right now the e-zone is not <laughs> yeah it doesn't it go up, the e-zone doesn't go up to ocean does yes it? yes no, no I'm it's not good. Not hard, but it, well, part of part of that zoning goes to Harvey. Yeah, yeah. That's where the E zone ends at Harvey. So you got almost half of that RDB. I, I understand, but I'm looking at the rewrite I'm, I'm does not allow. Empty, I'm gonna look at an empty Wendy's building, and and if it's not incorporated within it, it will not be grandfathered in, and I don't know what's going to happen. I know Ocean Deck bought it, but I, I'm I'm going to suggest to you that uh, again, creating the walkability. In this whole area, mm -hmm. it's not a good idea to, have to introduce yeah. these 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 auto-related uses. Right. We have enough opportunities in other places. Coming here, getting here, whether whether that happens to be on some of our coming across the bridges further down on A1A, uh, perhaps. But but in this area, I would suggest that we. We, we, we try to make this okay well right now when, when you look at restaurants and the only reason why I'm saying this is that I'm looking at a lot of empty property and um, and looking at restaurants with drive-through services the only uh, thing that I see here is downtown and the RDD 3 so if we're not going to put it on a1a at least let's put it on our ISB where uh, where there is a lot of vacant property there uh, some, I mean, we need to have some development. We'll, we'll get that. The one concern I would just let you know on ISB, especially as you look at it in the Main Street area, those are um, very shallow lots in terms yeah. of their depth. Yeah, but and you to can accumulate more than one piece of property, well, but put see, it together. But and no, then, then you go into the residential area. Right. You can't do that. Uh, you're getting into the service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've gone into yeah. a different zoning. Okay, yeah. I just... <laughs> I'm only, like, okay, I'm and sorry. that's an issue okay. we need yeah, to, I'll uh, and yeah. I'll, I'll get that too when we get to the new zoning <laughs> district. You said it back up. Yeah. Okay. 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 Go ahead, Jason. You love you. You got one. All right, Fred. All right. Um, really, I, I'm I looking at my notes. Special yeah. eating, we just need to add, and I, um, the bank adds. So really, it's the same comments as before. Unless there's any other. Um, um, really carrying forward some of the same comments we had from the, the Main Street zoning districts. Unless you have any other ones? No. Nope. RDB six. Let me, okay. Do you think a specialty bakery would ever be of interest on some of these areas? Yep. Yeah. I would think so. And, it, the, and I don't see them listed in any of them. That would be under specialty eating. eating. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then that like a Panera, Panera bread, bread or something? Or something. Yeah. yeah. I have one, one question. If we're on RDB6 now on permitted uses. Mm -hmm. When you were talking about uh, church, I remember one time when I was on the planning board, uh, somebody tried to make the point that uh, a church service was feeding a, a feeding facility. I mean, I don't know where that went and how, uh, how that was. I think how we're it, still dealing with that issue. Yeah. The church is... <laughs> Because because if you're going to be adding well, legal answer that they're one. not they're sure not supposed to be doing one. feeding programs. Yeah, we're, yeah, I, we're trying we're trying to create you know single family residences and we want to make sure that we don't do not put feeding facilities. Yeah, well, well, maybe maybe churches that's all being worked that that Maybe prior churches prior have to go. Excuse me. We we addressed that prior be, uh, before you came before you were appointed. So I mean that's the whole was, social that, service yeah, issue. Yeah, that went through that social service right. type okay, thing. Okay. Uh, in RDB6, this is the Surfside Village uh, residential use. Um, uh, let me uh, um, just, you see, I think you're all familiar with it. That's basically the neighborhood to the south of Main Street and just north of ISB. 
and basically it's uh, it's a single family district it does allow multifamily as a conditional use existing so you would just carry through those provisions um, there, there's a little must be a typographical mistake they put special they did put special eating in this neighborhood or in this zoning district we just, unless we want to have single family homes and some little coffee shops or <laughs> remove it. Um, and the laundromat also probably needs to be removed mm -hmm. uh, some commercial uses. Uh, professional offices are currently a conditional use in this district. So we'd carry that forward. And I believe we've already had a discussion as it relates to the, you know, last month with the uh, redevelopment plan about short-term rental lodging. So we'd remove that. Okay. And then... And that's basically, unless there's any other questions on but RDB6. The short term is part of the E zone and the comp plan changes. Well, that one little right. area, but they would have to go by the, that would be allowed under the overlay. Right. RDB8. Uh, how about R RDB7? Oh, come on <laughs> <laughs> You want to talk about your, uh, this is yeah. Yeah. zoning. <laughs> <laughs> this is riverfront lodging. Um, the one issue we do need to deal with um, on this in terms of the, the chart, this is a very interesting glitch in our current zoning code. There are no development standards Correct. for it. <laughs> so I believe what we'll, for now, unless you, um, depending on your feedback, just uh, probably the best standards to apply would uh, use the same that are in the Surfside neighborhood, similar right. zoning, you know, residential, single family zoning yeah. type standards. What's the difference between low intensity residential and single family? Oh, you know, I did, low intensity is is single family. I was just, yeah. Larger lots, so therefore lower okay. Okay. intensity. All right, so all we're allowing there is residential. It's Correct. basically what's allowed there currently. Yeah. Correct. Which also includes and bed and breakfast. B and B's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or actually, our current. You can't escape. Them. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. That's already there. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I do have a note. I believe they put in churches on that one, so we probably want to remove no. that. Wait, no. RDB7? No. 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 <laughs> wait, wait. RDB6, are you talking about? Yeah, RDB7. RDB7. No, they... So I could just declare the house a church, church and take and all the tax rolls. Sure. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> well, with the St. Demetrius Greek Orthodox <laughs> Church, it's an RDB7. Yeah, it's grandfathered in. Yeah, so we're there. We're it's just saying. Grandfathered in, but what if something like were to burn or something like that? Then it could be. Uh, no, no. The issue it is. go that far, does it? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I, I, know, I know that it's specifically between auditorium and um and um aura. Yeah, yeah aura and it looks right i mean actually earl street i'm sorry earl street oh you're saying this yeah the saint demetrius Where's greek the orthodox the church yeah. yeah right there is is i believe in it's, rdb you no know, let me um i'll double check that i um, think it's at the end of that i thought it's at the end you sure no, it's not one of these other zoning I, districts look, whenever i go to the church i take a right auditorium i take an immediate left and that to me right there looks like the church is right in there yeah because when we do when we do overflow <coughs> parking auditorium's the first street to the south and earl street's the first street but let's take a look at that the north. okay I tell you what if it is in the rdb7 we'll keep it as a conditional use right and write it that if we burn it, it built. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> location of a residence. Otherwise, what are we going to do for Greek? I know. You know. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not invited to the Greek <laughs> festival this year. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, no calamari. And if it's not in that zoning district, we'll, we'll remove it. So right. we'll just, just right. double check that. Now, can we move on to RDBA? Yes. RDB8, this is essentially the entertainment mix. This is the entertainment mix use zoning district. This is uh, around the convention center. Um, let's see if there are any. Uh, in the. Development standards, uh, probably one of them, they did something kind of funky with the less than 100 feet and then over 100 feet with, um, based on the street frontage. I think we'll just correct that to, I think what they're trying to do is bring in some standards that are currently in the, the code, but we'll deal with that a little differently. It's not consistent with the other areas. Maybe. They do it by, where they do it by use. We got that helicopter landing thing in there. <laughs> Somebody likes their helicopter. <laughs> Just the rectangle. Well, uh. actually, I think the less than 100 feet, the way I understand how these work, the only thing it affects, because you do have small lots, several small lots in there. I and 
I think at one time we did. I don't know if we currently do. Okay. Because I know when I've seen old maps where like some of the parking lots were still residential. Mm -hmm. You know, like okay. we were going through the inventory of the historic, mm -hmm. and now it's all large. If it is all large, it's fine. But if yeah. there's anything less than a hundred, the only thing that less than a hundred deals with are the side yard, interior yard, the setbacks. Yeah. They're small. I think there's obviously. a different way of doing it, so I'm going to work okay. clear. It just doesn't seem to be consistent with what they've done in okay. the other zoning districts. Okay. Um, let's see. In terms of uses, this is very similar. It's kind of a hybrid between, well, it's probably very similar to the RDB 1 and 4, where it allows that's hotels, allows different commercial uses as conditional. So a lot of those comments I made in RDB 1 would... Uh, carry forward in in this uh, zoning district and um, and then it allows amusements because um, that you know that because this zoning district is where the the Daytona yeah the lagoon is so unless there's any other comments on that particular nope yeah, I think okay. this, was, this was great so, and then in terms of the other, just to give you, I didn't really lay it out in the zoning, in the map, but just to let you know that you get the three additional zoning districts. Um, ISB corridor, I think I was beginning to say the issue there uh, is the shallow lot. So we got to find uh, a way to, you know, part of, you know, we're working on the streetscape, but we also want to look at our development standards on the private property to, inc to improve that corridor. Um, but corridor residential property. I'm sorry. What you board a residential property one right one lot in you're right, and that's that's the issue. And you know, currently it's zoned BR two, which you know really leads towards larger shopping centers. It's not, it's just not feasible, and I think that's what's kind of creating some of our problem. Why ISB looks the way it is, we just don't have a economically feasible zoning district in that area. Uh, what I suggest is what some cities have done and face the same thing where you have shallow lots. You're not going to put single family on it because they're not going to want to live right on a major thoroughfare. What you do is you allow multi, some sort of multi-family, smaller, low, medium intensity uh, multi-family uses that are compatible with the, with the residential behind, but at the same time, the, um, they don't, their access doesn't directly come on yeah. the uh, ISB. I've seen this development pattern be used in some other uh, northern cities so it might be it, where they face the same issue where a road was developed really with single-family homes over time it turned into really a major thoroughfare you got platted lots don't fit the, the the nature of the street the option is to go one one street in this example in yeah. this instance to the north and the south right just one lot you mean one yeah, lot one lot with right the, with the problems on the north side not on the south side uh, well, it's it's on the south side too. In some places, now some places you do have a larger area, area where we have been looking at some larger scale projects. So you yeah. would want to allow for those in those particular places. But I would say where we are dealing with this issue of just like lots are 100 feet deep, to allow some sort of development that is compatible with the neighborhood. The right. same thing, taking That's consideration of the street. Solution. Yeah. yeah. Well, what if um, now on some of these um, planned commercial developments, if it starts going into a, uh, a different zoning area, would it be something that could be brought before the commission? Like if it, let's say if there was uh, somebody that did want to develop something sure. over there, uh, can they package the, uh, the zoning that, that fronts ISB with a residential zoning as long as they purchase all the property owners and it's possible, but you know, part of what we're trying to do in the Clarion is, it, it, well, yeah, is to, uh, you know, I think one of the issues I've heard stresses leading to this is kind of reduce the need so much for doing planned developments. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we want to design a, a zoning district that, that works right. yeah, economically for the situation. That, that's possible. Yeah. It, you can. You can, but see, what, what, what you're basically telling me is that you're going to, uh, that that we're going to be limited to multifamily uses. No, no, there'll ISB. be no, there'll be some other uses too. I'm just other. giving that as an example, a type of use that would of be compatible. Residential use. It yeah. Come out on the right. Yeah, I think that. I, I think you want to go more towards residential, and especially in a lot of that that stretch. Blended. 
It's a blended well, use. I, I understand that. Would Get away more, from this strip appeal. I understand appeal. that would be more of a transitional zoning right. to a residential, but right. the reality is um, you're probably going to be uh, more likely to be able to sell it off as to some kind of retail oriented. You know. Well, right, right now, you know, it's a lot of those properties. I mean, it's probably I think the reason why they're sitting there. There is. Uh, yeah. There's. Well, it's a, it's a pen because yeah. of the different aspects. You know, yeah. once you get west of west of Peninsula, they're shallower. Between Peninsula and Grandview, on the deep, on the south side, the property is deep. On yeah. The, on, there's different issues right. in these different yeah. areas. Yeah. So, the north side. so I think uh, you know, that's yeah. why that's why I ask a, a developer who has a subway there. Yes, he could. Yes, he could. Where, yeah. the, where the subway like Denton used to be, right. and all, you know, all that. There, those properties are deeper, and there, yes, he there's can. an ability to do things there yeah. that. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah. Uh, you would also mix in some ability to do some, you know, we commercial uses there too. Right. What else you got for it, Jason? Uh, and then in terms of, <coughs> let's see what's some of the other zoning districts. So you just to give you an idea. Oh, RDB ten is a, re a residential district that'll pattern very much after the Surfside Village, and RDB eleven is a multifamily, um, would just allow higher intensity multifamilies uh, where there is level three uh, land use in the Main Street area. Okay. All right. With respect to our proposed rewrite here of the Land Development Code, uh, do you want to come back with more sections at the next meeting or are we done through what you want to do with us? <laughs> I think right now we've gotten through module two. Uh, gotten your feedback, going to combine in what we've heard from the Midtown Board and from the Downtown Board and uh, get the feedback back to Clarion so they can make the corrections. The next time you see this, um, we'll be dealing with Module 3, which is the architectural standards for okay. development. Okay. Very good. Thank also, you. one other thing is, is let you know that as individuals, not necessarily this board, you can also make comments and we still have the website there. You yeah. call the planning department so there are many ways for the public you to continue to provide your comments Reed you got a now a redevelopment projects update sure um, don't sit down let's <laughs> yeah stay here Jason for just <laughs> one moment um, uh, first of all I've got uh, the red line uh, uh, that we just sent out to the uh, the city commission this is this is what was approved to go to the commission from the community redevelopment agency yeah. i asked reed to give us a red line from what we approved last right. month right. so we could look at it and make sure it was in sync with where we thought we approved so we can take a look at that Thank and if you. we have any concerns you can express them i guess directly to the city commission or whatever <laughs> Thank you. right there's um, not at this meeting, to our right? chairman not at this meeting. you mean this is this is what yeah. we took the 10 minute recess to no, I what are no. you talking about the red line? No, when we went through um, the um, the redevelopment area, the redevelopment plan, and made our oh, okay, changes, yes, I know what. And All I right, asked for the a red plan, line not the that, comp plan. Yes, so that okay. we could uh, look at it and make sure we were in sync. Just <laughs> okay. so okay. for our information. Okay. This is not the comp plan. At, at, at our leisure. Is, yes. Yeah, at our at our leisure, <laughs> not tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Got it. Because we don't need Thank to take you. a thirty-minute break to review that. <laughs> uh, read the. Sure. Redevelopment then. Sure. Just, oh, uh, yes, the, I know. I went through all uh, this. The other things that we had uh, were on the ISP streetscape. Uh, we've slowed that down to uh, allow the uh, consultants to, to uh, uh, look at some different and interesting alternatives, kind of like we did with the EZO master plan and, and, and putting together lots of alternatives that we think we ought to be looking at, not just one option. And so uh, that direction has been given. They're, they're uh, expecting to come back and do something like we did um, with the E-Zone and we will go to the Peabody Auditorium and have a, a, a charrette and, uh, uh, with, with the consultants and they'll, they'll take us through these different options and we'll, as the public, everyone will get a chance to, to get their input at that point on the first look at what we might be able to do on East ISB as well as that section in downtown and West ISB, okay. both sides of the bridge. Okay. I have a question. How will that affect the um, proposed the phase one development at the Blue Water Gateway? Because they're supposed to tie in 
sure. to we, that streetscape. We've we've been in uh, uh, communication with them about okay. that, and to make sure. they'll, okay. they're working with us. So there's kind of a uh, a way to fit in as we go forward. We talked about that with the marina. Okay, because I just wouldn't want them to have to come back through the PD process because something might be wildly different from what, since that is a PD, I wouldn't want them to actually have to pay more money just to meet our new standards if they change from what's in there. So I, I would just hope that we keep that in mind and consideration. Okay. We are. Great. Okay, thank you. The uh, going on, uh, the, I have peer update in here, this, the, um, the storm. Uh, we got a, a good chance to see what, what uh, at least the tropical storm that did come through was a little bigger than I think some people expected. The no-name hurricane. And it did pop up, uh, uh, besides the, the, the ball that got blown off in, in, the, in the high winds, we had uh, some pretty good seas that came in too. And, and uh, we did knock off about the last 10 feet of the planks there. In, and if you hear that, that those are the old planks. They were expected to, to do that. They're designed to do that because you don't want that pressure under and pushing up your mm -hmm. structure. So uh, we weathered the storm in that Bravo. regard. Bravo. Good. Yeah. And met design standards. And Bravo. Me Bravo. <laughs> That's correct. And it is still our historic pier. So uh, moving on to Surfside a Historic District, uh, just to let you know that the uh, <coughs> Uh, the Historic Preservation Board is getting closer to some uh, design standards in that uh, that proposal for a local district. And Jason, do you have any update on that for what's going to happen next Tuesday evening at six o'clock? At the Historic no? Board. Okay. Yeah. Other than I think they're going to review it. Yeah, there's going to be a review. So it, when we get more information, we'll we'll get you up to date, or you're certainly welcome to to attend the meeting. Could you tell us just the status of where they stand on Main Street? Putting it all in the local district or still, recognizing they're not, that has they're not, still dealing with all of that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Where is their meetings here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. Six o'clock uh, next Tuesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Okay. Board comments. Start with we'll go around. Dino. Um, I'm good. Good. Gary. Yeah, I, I hate to raise this issue, but um, at the mayor's cabinet, we are always talking about the street lights, you know, on A1A and in the redevelopment area. And so it just caught my attention, and I walk early in the morning, and I realized that in our redevelopment area, 90% of the internally lit street signs are burned out. Um, I thought we were doing an economy thing and we weren't putting any <laughs> bulbs inside them until I got to the corner of Main Street and A1A and one of them is flickering. flickering. Uh, one is on, two are burned out and, and then I decided well I'm going to track this. <laughs> and so I went up and down A1A and I don't know whose responsibility it is but I think it looks, it does, it looks awful. You know? At at, um, at Ocean Walk, they're all burned out at that intersection. Everyone is is dark. Um, I went farther north, and in Ormond Beach, they have the same lit street signs, and 90% of them were on. So I'd like to to pass on to my colleagues on the staff that really, and this is over a month now. This is they've been burned out. That really something probably should be done. I don't know if the fixtures themselves are, are gone, are oxidized, you know, they have to be replaced or whether it's just the bulbs. But I but we need to we need to have this this street sign as well. And Gary, do, do I understand ninety percent on A one A? Was that yeah. the survey area? Yeah. Okay. Okay. One uh, is flickering, <coughs> I think eleven are, are dead and um, three of them are <laughs> well, it's my understanding, and I know others check into this, that every week we have somebody out there looking in the evening for the, the lights. And I know that some, some of that is yeah. 
they look up. FPL, and we have those. Those are those are issues where you have to work with another company. The lights, I, I understand completely. I'm talking about the city maintained internally lit signs that say Main Street, the green uh, Earl Street. Those green ones, green yeah. Green signs that say Main Street. Yeah. Yes. The, 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 yeah. Oh. Are they caught, my colleagues? Are they out? Yeah, they're mm -hmm. out, yeah. and they've been out for a while. Okay, I will check into that. Thank, Thank you, Gary. Yeah. Tim. Uh, I've got a question. We approved uh, what was it two meetings or was the, the two meetings ago? One meeting ago, the parking lot, boardwalk parking lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, yeah. When it when and uh, the the gentleman that did the presentation said that they were going to get started right away once they got our approval. Do you know when they're going to be starting? To bring that lot up to code. Uh, they are starting, I know, in engineering. I'm not sure when they're getting in the ground yet. They're they're starting their well, they're starting their engineering. No, there's there's they're, they they got to finish up their plans and. No, they've been. Is it it's it's because he said when he was here that everything was done yeah, and all they were, they were waiting I for our seen, approval to get going. I have not seen on. anything. Well, just just you know when you see those site plans come through and you approve them, there is a kind of a process where they submit their final plans. Right based on your so just because you approve it that night doesn't mean right. they're approved well, I mean they're approved but they have to make yeah. a final submittal to the I city what's called the final, final the yeah, plan and, and right yeah, and, and so all that I'm asking is, is that was just that's just issued I want to say last week so now so they've got their their yes. their, their building permit because whatever you call it right you know it's not a building and they have two permit. years from that day so they better get they, no, no no code no, needs to get on to them long before no, no, yeah, they don't. no but Actually, I'm saying if they're not if they're not proceeding with Right, their construction, they're in non-compliance. Yeah, yeah, and right, they need to. Yeah, they, that's can't, they can't drag us out for two years. No, 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 no. That, what I'm saying is they're just eating up the time that they can have a parking lot there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're that they're two years has started. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That but, two but years. That no, two years has started. Yeah, but they, they can't. They cannot operate non-compliance for two years. No. 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 They. What well, we're. The, the yeah, intent is after Biketoberfest, because we do in the middle of everything that's going okay. on, there there are issues, but I would hope that after Biketoberfest, we get to work. Well, it, yeah. it would, okay. and my, yeah. my my only concern is that we're going to hit that we're going to hear the excuse for Biketoberfest, and then it's going to be race week, and then it's going to. Or be no, it's going to be Turkey Rod Run. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just. Yeah. Okay. That's just my concern. We have an expectation. Now, now is the time for them to be doing the, the work during the off season. It is, and, I, and, and that's the intent, and I think we all have expectations. Tracy. Dave. Nothing. I just have a few quick. Uh, John's mentioned this a couple times, uh, Reed, and, and help educate me. Why does downtown and such have staff and Main Street doesn't? And who do they have and why doesn't Main Street? Well, first of all, it's Although not. Although we love you. <laughs> sure. It's not, first of all, it's not black and white. I, Jason is working in the Main Street area and, and uh, we, we have some of our strengths and specialties. So to say that we don't have somebody in one place or another, I've got uh, Charles Bryant, who's very active. Uh, he, while he's, his primary duty may be Midtown. He has uh, time that he spends, and we have to mark these time cards and everything for audit, because we're, what, what CRA we are in sure. is, is key. So he spends time over in, in, in these different districts, and he works with the uh, demolitions and some of the, some of the special projects. He's, he's looking and reporting on graffiti and, and making those drives in the field. So you've got that kind of activity going on that's overlapping. Uh, my job is primarily with the E-Zone and, and uh, doing some of the work with the, the businesses, ISB, uh, that part of it. So I spend a significant amount of time in Main Street. And, uh, and this pulls us away. Uh, we have a, a position uh, that, that uh, we basically um, eliminated that is now uh, uh, been considered moved over to the city manager's office. If you've looked at the budget, there is an e-zone manager position that's open right now. Applications are being taken, and uh, and and there will be uh, a position uh, that was created for that purpose. So 
that's that will be your uh, person who will have that that concentration of work over there in the Main Street area. So we're actually getting some manpower back. Good. All right. Next question I had is, there's some dredging going on right by the Main Street mm -hmm. bridge. Does anybody know why they're dredging that? Good. I was wondering too. I mean, it's been there for two or three weeks, and all the way up to the um, by where the walkover. It's where they put in the new water line across uh, south of the Main Street Bridge. Does John know something? Come on, John. Educate us. And while you're educating on that, let us know what they're doing at the corner of Main Street and Beach Street, too. I mean, the black dirt? Uh, oh, uh, no, they're planting it. That's planting. That's the new um, recycled water. You see the pink mm -hmm. pipes? That's what they're doing there. And then they're doing the landscaping on top of that. Uh, no, several years ago they talked about the people walking across the uh, water from the Main Street to the island. And they were going to dredge it. They put aside the money, I think, five years ago, six years ago, whatever. They're now dredging that whole thing. They took away the, um, the p pipes, the fence. That they're now, th those fences are gone, and they're taking the rock that they got out on the west side when they redid LPGA, and those fences are gone. They're putting in coral rock or keystone around it. Well, and I then they it. dig up the, that inlet so that people can't walk across into... Uh, cannot walk. Cannot no, walk. That was the That's problem. Yeah, because it used to, when, at low tide, you could, it wade. Became, you could wade across because there was only about this much space of water. It became hobo hangout. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, that's so why really it's a security measure by dredging. They're, they're, they're creating a moat. Yeah. yeah, it used to be very deep there, and over time it filled in. Yes. So now they're going back to it. And what I don't understand is why they're putting that gunk next to the keystone. If you look at it, 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 by the um, News Journal Center, they just put the rocks there. Now they're digging up the, the gunk and putting it right next to the, the keystone. They're just moving it and creating a deeper... Deep, so you can't just walk okay. anymore. That's what they're doing. All right. I, I just could not fathom why they were spending tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, Mr. Chairman, One will the E-Zone manager be a support staff to this board? Is that what you said? Or... Is uh, could could we talk briefly about the cart and the horse when it comes to th this advisory board? And now we'll have different staffs. We'll have an E zone manager, and we'll have develop. We'll have <laughs> redevelopment. And um, well, the, the what what will the posi what will the job description say? The do job description is out there, and it's posted, um, and you can see on our website. And that that particular position is intended to be that person that we were starting to describe as the the person whether as the e-zone develops what are they going to do first well we want to deal with that primary tourist area out there with managing it having someone their eyes are in, on it all the time not wait for Dino or anyone else have to call us and and deal with the, the issues that are there as well as on Main Street so from maintenance issues and, and making okay. sure that all that happens to creating a tourist friendly environment that is there. Will that be and independent of this board? It'll or be, will, will it'll, that person report, uh, work with this board? This, this position may or may not, I don't know the details of that, and I okay. don't recall seeing that in any job description. Okay. At the very least, I'd contemplate that person would report to us as. If there are, just like police code and code yes, and everyone else least. will be someone that will I think if there are issues that are coming up that'll be an opportunity because we need to interact and sure so and we I'm, want to interact so let's put it this way when somebody is uh, brought on board that somebody will have an opportunity to come here and introduce themselves and uh, and uh, we can uh, better understand what uh, that initial position will be because it'll change as the e-zone itself changes um, it, it'll still be incumbent upon us to uh, look at redevelopment as redevelopment attracts hotels and other uh, businesses to this area it prepares will, for that will the e-zone person be funded out of the trust fund in the redevelopment area yes it will okay well, there's a you know there's an obvious an obvious link uh, there, uh, and um, 
Again, maybe at our next meeting we can talk about the cart and the horse. Um, this board either is the cart or the horse, and staff is either the cart or the horse, or we're both horse and we're both cart. And I think as things get more complicated, I think it would be, I just like to, no, I, I don't like surprises. I just like to know what the, what the drill is. Yeah. And I think we all would, what the expectations of staff are from us and what our expectations are uh, to the staff and, and the CISO, the new E-Zone manager too. It would be yeah. a very critical, very important. Reed, if you could perhaps for our next package, get us out the qualifications or whatever it is, the, their job description, so we can all have that. And, and a chart. Is there an organizational chart yeah, of how this be. thing works? Do we get to hire to him? <laughs> who they report to and all that, you know. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. Shall we be adjourned? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.